that's all, or head to globalplayer.com. Coming up at one, it's Clyde Ball, but next, right here on LBC, it's Nick Abbott. Dean, this week in Toryland, they're going back to their roots like Odyssey without the boot zipping. They've done shouting at rainbows and saying we're being invaded, so where else for a party thrashing about trying to avoid a terminal decline? Well, the old ones are the best ones, which is why we are now invited to bash the sec. Benefits cheats are the dish of the day. It's the meal that never went away. They just froze it to defrost in an emergency. In other news, the Olympic Team GB kit does not play with the flag because that made people very angry. No, it doesn't do anything to the flag at all which is making people very angry. That and more coming up with me, Nick Abbott, after the new news at 10 on LBC. On your radio, on Global Player, and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation, this is LBC. From Global's newsroom at 10 o'clock. A man's in a critical condition after setting himself on fire in New York City, outside the court where Donald Trump's hush money trial is taking place. Officials say conspiracy theory leaflets were found nearby and he'd travelled to Manhattan from Florida earlier this week. LBC's correspondent in New York, Sally Patterson, has been to the scene. Police said that he sort of walked into the centre of that park. He opened up his book bag pulled out some paper, some pamphlets, then threw them around him, doused himself in some sort of liquid, which they think was a substance for cleaning, and then he lit himself on fire. Lancashire Police has confirmed it's reviewing the available information concerning the MP, Mark Menzies. The former Conservative stepped down from the Parliamentary Party yesterday following allegations he'd misused campaign finances. A flight tracking website says airlines are changing routes and cancelling some flights over Iran after a suspected Israeli attack on the country earlier this morning. Israel's government and military is declining to comment, firm or deny whether it was responsible. The British diplomat and former ambassador to Jordan, Peter Millett, has been talking to LBC this evening. The unprecedented nature of this is that this is the first time these countries have openly attacked each other. Um, and... Uh, if that is a, a page which has been turned, which is dangerous, then the risk of escalation is still there. And that's the most worrying factor. People who are fit to work but don't accept a job offer within 12 months are to have their benefits taken away under new government plans. The charity Scope says the Prime Minister's reform plans for the welfare system are dangerous and a full-on assault on disabled people. Scotland's former First Minister Nicola Sturgeon says she's facing an incredibly difficult situation after her husband was charged with embezzling funds. Peter Morell was also arrested as part of the investigation into SNP finances for the first First time more than a year ago. And in sport this evening, the former Wales international footballer Leighton James has died at the age of 71. The winger also had three spells at Burnley. In the city, the FTSE 100 has closed for the week, up 19 points at 78.96. The pound will buy $1.24 and a Euro 16. LBC Weather with Ripple Energy. Part owner wind farm and take control of your energy. Largely dry and clear overnight and particularly chilly where the skies are clear with a low of minus one. A chilly start for Saturday but mostly dry with some sunny intervals. A high eventually in some areas of 13 degrees. From Global's Newsroom, for LBC, I'm Tim Daly. This is LBC from Global. Leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. Yeah! Well, let's get back to it. After a week of tornadoes and hailstorms, the days ahead look better as a plume of higher air covered the country. A big hot plume all over us. From Sunday into Monday, the mercury will be rising into the late teens for much of Britain as warmer temperatures finally threaten to take control. <gasps> Maps turn orange from Sunday into Monday, bringing brighter conditions for many in contrast to an area of colder air lingering over Central Europe. But don't get carried away, because they seem to have changed the colours on the map so that things look better than they actually are, or hotter than they actually are. I wouldn't call what's about to happen to us an orange map colour. It's yellow at best. 
For the next few days, the wind will probably come from a northerly or easterly direction, which means it won't be warm. There's a biting cold to that wind. When will it ever stop? Well, we could jump to hear the long-range forecast for the next four weeks. Yes? No. <laughs> it took a while. <laughs> You're driven a bus through that gap, Carol. Yeah. Right, till the end of the month. Next couple of weeks. High pressure to the northwest of the UK and low pressure to the southeast. The wind predominantly from a northerly or easterly direction, so temperatures a little below average, but a reasonable amount of dry weather, especially in the north and west. What? The north and west? Dry? Well, I'll have to check on that while you wait. One moment, please. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh -huh, uh, uh, uh. Well, it's not raining at the moment in Glasgow. Can you believe that? No. It will not be... It, you're actually going to get sun tomorrow. Blimey. Uh, it won't be raining on Sunday. It won't, won't be raining on Monday. It won't be raining on Tuesday. And it won't be raining on uh, Wednesday, according to this app, which must be faulty. I don't believe a word of it. But it does say that it will be raining on Thursday and raining on Friday and raining on Saturday and raining on Sunday and raining on Monday and raining on Tuesday and raining on Wednesday and raining on Thursday. So you've got like a couple of days to dry out. To dry out at most. Um, first two weeks of um, May. Well, uh, at first, driest conditions in the north. Don't believe it. Further south and east, showers at times. Well, I can totally believe that. But then... As we move towards the middle of May, good spells of dry weather just about everywhere, temperatures could trend toward the warm side of average. <gasps> temperatures could trend beyond, toward the warm side of average? We'll take it. Oh. And almost fall over my own face trying to say it. Martin texts, did you hear that the PM doesn't want sick notes to be signed by GPs in future? Instead, they will be unspecified specialist work and health professionals employed to do a patient assessment. Well, uh, that sounds uh, reasonable to me. <laughs> <laughs> he says, if the government handles sick notes in the same way it handles asylum cases, a school leaver in 2024 needing a sick note should receive one just in time for their retirement party. Yeah, about uh, 65 years old. There or thereabouts. And Ahmed, Ahmed says, Don't you wish you had a rich wife or father-in-law to fall back on to help pay your bills if you ever went sick off work? We can only blame ourselves if we do not. That is right. Yes, you should have thought hard and long before being born to poor parents. Isn't that right, Smug? My view... Oh, yeah, we know what your view is. On any given subject. <laughs> on, whatever it is, it's wrong. We could have cheaper food, clothing and footwear. Straight, straight away. away. Straight away. Of course we could. Straight away. Don't you understand? Tariq says, Nick, could you please send me £5,000? I'm locked in a room against my will. It's a matter of life and death. Here are my bank details. Absolutely. <laughs> but I know an organisation that can. Just as long as you don't say anything about it. <laughs> Blimey, those floods in Dubai were something else, weren't they? And um, following the shocking floods this week, questions were raised over whether cloud seeding could have caused the heavy rains. Questions were raised in the right-wing press as to whether cloud seeding could have caused the heavy rains. And those are the headlines that they put over the stories about this very issue. Ha did cloud seeding cause the heavy rains in uh, the UAE? And uh, the answer to that was... No, 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 no. But you had to read all the way down to the bottom of the page to see that they were refuting their own headline. Now, they write this stuff knowing that people only read the headline. 90% of the people that read a paper only read the headline. They don't read the rest of the story at all. For the 10% that do actually read some of the rest of the story, they will almost all stop at the end of the first paragraph. Nobody reads the stuff at the bottom. They don't go past the ads, they don't go past the endless pictures of people sunning themselves on a hot beach somewhere. They don't do any of that. They just read the headline, come to a usually a wrong opinion about the subject uh, at, uh, uh, at hand, and then uh, march on to the next story. Following the shocking floods this week, questions were raised over whether cloud seeding could have caused the heavy rains. But the only people that were raising this question were the people writing newspapers who then were forced 
presumably just because they um, acquired some um, uh, morals during the course of uh, writing this story, they were forced at the end to uh, say uh, no. Headlines that are questions, they're just great on me enormously. They rub my fur up the wrong way. Were uh, cloud seeding um, uh, efforts uh, the, at a fault for the heavy rains in UAE, they'll ask. Well, I don't know. You're the journalist. You tell me. What are you asking me for? Flight tracking data analysed by the Associated Press showed one aircraft affiliated with the UAE's cloud seeding efforts flew around the country on Sunday. And uh, people of a conspiratorial bent immediately leapt to the wrong conclusion. A meteorologist at the UAE's National Centre for Meteorology said uh, that uh, several cloud seeding sorties were flown in the days before the unprecedented rainfall hit. And to give you an, an idea, I mean, the, it's actually amazing. A, a year and a half's rain fell in one day. <laughs> Imagine if a year and a half's rain in Glasgow fell in one day. Scotland would be um, up to its uh, eyeballs in water right now. Climate experts. Oh, climate experts. Not, not experts, the like of which we have had enough of. Oh, no. Experts yet. Said global warming was the main culprit behind the extreme weather events, arguing that cloud seeding is nowhere near effective enough to have triggered such a downpour. They says, uh, yeah, said that an abnormal weather system was already headed for the region and blamed uh, the uh, flooding on Dubai's poor drainage systems. Well, that certainly rings a bell, don't it? Poor drainage systems. It's just that we need our draining systems. Dubai generally doesn't. Professor Martin of the Atmospheric Physics Laboratory at the University of Reading said, the UAE does have an operational cloud seeding program to enhance the rainfall in this arid part of the world. However... There is no technology in existence that can create or even severely modify this kind of rainfall event. So the answer to the question, whether cloud seeding could have caused the heavy rains, is no. But everybody who just glanced at that headline thought, yes. <sighs> Mike says, according to her book, Upon the Queen's Death, Truss is reported to have said, why me? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's very difficult to tell which is the parody version of her book on Twitter and which is the real deal. Which clips have been taken directly from her book and which are just parodies of what she might have said if, uh, you know, if, uh, if she'd actually lost her mind completely and totally, like this. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, absolutely and completely. Why me, she said, when the Queen dies? <laughs> <laughs> Why now, she said. <laughs> and um, Mike says, these must have been exactly the Queen's sentiments when she was having to meet Truss. What do you think? Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. Why me? Why now? Lucy says, looking at my student loan today, I realised the interest rate had increased fourfold since the shortest ever premiership. Now I have clear evidence of her trickle-down economics in action. She's very clear, is Lucy. I'm genuinely unclear. Is uh, the Lizbot. The blunder truss. Well, it's uh, very hard to know where to begin. Um, I'll do the Team GB kit. But I'm two up against an advert to start it now, so I'll start it in one. This is like forthcoming attractions. Isn't it exciting? No. 0345 6060 973, text 84850, email nick a at lbc.co.uk. If you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10, Nick Abbott, LBC. This is LBC. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 6060 973, tweet at LBC, text 84850. Listen to him. He knows everything. David Tex, can you let me know what time this evening's rendition of Je Tame will occur, please? I'm on a flight to Singapore at the moment, and I don't want to be caught unawares. Is that the one where I do, uh, 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 that's Beyonce, you Aegis, not Je Tame. Je Tame is the one where uh, she uh, sounds like she's having a, uh, you know. Disgusting. Exactly. Have you ever heard anything <laughs> like it, Rose? Oh. Uh. Rose. 
Oh, you, you didn't say where I was. Hello. You're in, you're in Devon, Rose. You know where you are, surely. <laughs> Get a grip, yes, woman. I, <laughs> I remember that orgasmic song very well, yeah. actually. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's just a... Well, yeah. I yeah. couldn't actually remember the tune, but yeah, right. That is, there it's it is, a... in perfect harmony. Yes. Well, you've ambushed me now. Um, it's a light-hearted thing before things take a serious turn, because uh -oh. you never know, do you? Yeah. Um, well, I sometimes buy the radio, buy Radio Times, sometimes buy it. Is this a call um, from the we... 1970s? The Radio Times? <laughs> 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 this becomes relevant, I'm telling okay, you. OK, then. Three weeks ago, the letters page were asking readers um, for their radio, for their favourite radio voices. So, obviously, I wrote in about you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah they didn't print my name, though, did they? They printed your name, no Did picture. they? Yeah. And it's only a short letter, because mm. you don't get them in if they're not short, do you? Right. And I also said the BBC's Donald McLeod and Sean Rafferty. I, I, Sean Rafferty. He used to be in uh, Steeler's Wheel. Oh, excellent work, <laughs> Steeler's Wheel. <laughs> well, Fergus Lee Park, too, yes. my favourite album. Oh, I don't, I don't know that name. I was thinking of um, two S others. But, yeah. Steve, Steeler's Wheel, stuck in the middle with you. Jerry Rafferty went on to do yes. Baker Street. And I yes, think I um, the, the other uh, end it was um, the chap whose name you just mentioned. I, I can't sure. remember what it is. Well, Sean Rafferty is a music Ah, um, yeah, Rafferty, that's presenter. right, OK. And um, yes. the other one... Donald McLeod. No, there was... No, it wouldn't uh, be Donald McLeod. Jerry Rafferty and somebody Egan. Oh, I, be I better got that right. Somebody Egan, which is terrible. I'm, I, I am uh, very apologetic for not being able to remember the whole... Can, can, you can remember Jerry Rafferty's whole name. Yeah, well, it's kind of got a ring to it, hasn't it? Yeah. But anyway, it's a short... It's a short... Well, I said it was a short letter, did I? Yeah. Yeah. But... The right. delectable Rafferty got sliced off. You know, they make these things shorter. Um, <laughs> well, they're just, it's in they're the just issue a, that... It, they just attacked it and sliced the end off. I'm going to email him personally and say, I yeah. think you've got a wonderful voice. Right. You know, I'm a bit daft like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> it's a bit... It's a sort of lower one. You know, I'm very interested in this, in this the voices... Yes, well, I, before you look him or me up on the World Wide Way to see what we actually look like, I can guarantee that we look nothing like you think we do. Radio people never look anything like people's imagination would lead them to believe. No, you, no. You, but you cannot can still tell. Voice, you oh, see? yeah, but you can't tell you know? what somebody you know? looks like from the sound of their voice because they might sound fantastic, but they look yeah. like, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Always was well not to look at photo really. Yes, exactly right. Yes, there are, people anyway, are on radio for a issue, reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's in the issue that expires after today. Um, if you want to have a look at it, no, absolutely no not. Thing no. he said. No. But you see, uh, I thought I'd just add this, uh, Nick, um, because as I say, I often just look at the radio pages in in the shop. Uh, but I thought... <laughs> Does anybody ever say, Are you, you're going to buy that? It's not a library, you know. <laughs> no, no, I managed to hide behind something right. to do it. Oh, dear, I've given myself away now. I was going to say between you and me. But um, today, there it was, the issue sitting there. I thought, well, I'm... Yeah, I have to buy it now, one. yeah. Well, no, unless I bought you the one with me in it, obviously. You stole but, it, yeah. But... Um, I bought the one today because it's got Chris Packham on the front with a load of birds. Oh yeah, and a lovely blue background, and it's Earth Day special issue. We're, we're not stuff in there about this whole, right. um, you know, polluting the rivers thing. These, as well. these so, days, uh, Rose, we're we're not really allowed to call women birds. Oh really? Oh. <laughs> 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 I wouldn't mean to <gasps> say it. Guilty. Well, there's an owl. Oh, those kind of birds. That makes more sense. Yeah. All right. Well, li Chris Packham. Yeah. Okay. I love his work, whatever it is. Thanks a lot, Rose. Got to go. Cheers, my dear. 0345 6060 973. Tina Tex, I hope these people realize if you are not on benefits, you don't sit in a pile of cash, you spend it. So it goes back into the system. And I've heard of a wonderful product called Coal Butter. But we have lots of coal in Wales. It could solve a lot of uh, the UK's hunger pangs. Do you want to go into business? Well, let me uh, think about that. No. No. 
Coal butter? What's that? I've heard of coal tar, which is soap, which is um, counterintuitive. Do you want to wash your face with soap? No. Um, made from coal? Would make more sense. Chris Tex, did you see the Tories Rishi Sunak now wants to strip GPs of... OK, so you really, really want me to do this one. All right, so I'll park the uh, Team GB uh, Olympics kit and I'll do the sick notes thing. It says, did you see uh, the, uh, ri uh, that Rishi Sunak now wants to strip GPs of their power to sign people? Sign people. And the PM claimed the benefits have become a lifestyle choice. Oh, God, they didn't, he did not use that phrase. Uh, which is causing a spiralling welfare bill. He really is ignorant. I'm disabled. I don't choose to have cerebral palsy. And he is not aware of the pittance that we get. Even we get even scope the cerebral palsy charity brand. Oh, OK. So there's not much punctuation in here. I'm just trying to uh, do the best I can. So, uh, we're, uh, Scope, the cerebral palsy charity, branded the plans as a full-on assault on disabled people. Well, that's, that, that certainly sounds like... This government... Doesn't it? <laughs> Picking on, the, on those least able to fight back. Yeah, that's, that, that certainly sounds like this government. Rishi Sunak unveiled a major crackdown on Britain's sick note culture this week because he's tried yelling at flags and screaming at scones and it didn't do him any good at all. So now the Tories are replaying the classics, starting with benefits cheats. Boo! If in doubt, identify a group of people worse off than you are and attack, attack, attack. Prime Minister Titchy Suitsize used a speech to lay out plans for specialist teams to assess what work people can do rather than GPs signing them off from work. And that phrase, specialist teams sent warning bells going off in my mind. How about you? Who's it going to be? Serco? G4S? Infosys? No, not Infosys. Not the company that Titchy married into. The company his wife has about a billion pounds worth of shares in. I mean, they're so busy already. What with all the government contracts they've won under Rishi Sunak's tenure. I bet they're too rushed off their feet to take on any more government work. And how many people are we talking about here? Well, Titchy said that 850,000 more people are long-term sick than before the pandemic, with the largest increase among young people. He said that it's time to be more honest about the risk of over-medicalising the everyday challenges and worries of life. He's right. And also, it's time to be more, more honest about the risk of under delivering the medical treatment that would have kept people well enough to be in the workforce. I mean, I know this might sound like a radical notion, but is it possible that the nation's health might be associated with the health of the nation's health service? Um. Think about it. Sunak stressed that he didn't want to make the system less generous for those who genuinely needed support. OK, let's see a show of hands. Do you think that Rishi Sunak's Conservative Party would like to see the system less generous for those who genuinely need help? Show of hands. Now let's see a show of hands for those who think they would not like the system to be less generous to those who genuinely need support. Well, that's overwhelming. I mean, you don't have to take my word for it. Just look at the voting record of every Tory MP. I might be wrong. Glad to be corrected, but I don't think there's a single Tory MP who has voted for an increase in welfare in line with inflation for the long-term disabled and sick. Just pick any Tory. And I bet they have voted against the money that the least able among us receive, keeping up with inflation. So we know he wants the system to be less generous to those in need, because that's the way that he and everyone else on those benches around and behind him have always voted. It's not a secret. The overriding principle seems to be that if you are poor, it's your fault. If you are sick, well, that's just God's way of telling you you're a slacker. And then he went all moral on us. Rishi Sunak said that it was his moral mission to get people in work as it was the way to improve living standards. 
and not just improve the living standards of people in Tunbridge Wells by taking government money from deprived urban areas and giving it to the Tory heartlands that he's concerned about, because, you know, that wouldn't be very moral at all, unless I'm confused about what the word moral means. And it doesn't mean acting in good character at all, and does in fact mean uh, doing things wickedly, indecently, dishonestly and corruptly. <coughs> Sunak said that in future, anyone on benefits for 12 months who didn't comply with the conditions set by their work coach would be stripped of handouts entirely. This is his tough pledge that sets the feature in the Tory manifesto, which probably won't have the word Tory or Conservative on it and will be coloured green as the Conservative Party tries to distance itself from itself. The number of people considered economically inactive after being placed on long-term sickness benefits has jumped by a third since the start of the pandemic and now stands at £2.8 million. Around half are signed off with depression, anxiety and bad nerves. <laughs> Could that have anything to do with... This government? Yeah, it probably is. Probably is. I mean, it's giving me depression, anxiety and bad nerves. Why not everybody else? The PM highlighted figures showing that GPs issue fit notes, which are actually sick notes, to 94% of those who ask for them, with more than 11 million doled out last year. So rather than deal with the cause, which I'd suggest is the state of the health service that has 7.7 .7 million people on a waiting list to be treated for something that is so bad that they're on a hospital waiting list, he is going to redefine uh, the definition of sick. Oh, fabulous. He said it, it could be time to end the role of GPs in the system. I mean, if it wasn't so serious, it'd be funny. I could be appalled. I've decided to be amused. After 14 years of Tory defunding, there are too many sick people. So the Prime Minister of this country is going to take doctors out of the equation. Yeah, that as, makes as much sense as anything else I've heard all year. I mean, why not? Let people with no expertise or knowledge of medicine determine who is and is not well. Give the job to an outsourcing company, preferably won by uh, a, a major donor to the Conservative Party, and give them a target to reach, and honestly, what could possibly go wrong? Um. <laughs> oh, 0345. 6060973 text 84850 email nick a at lbc.co.uk if you're on twitter it's at lbc friday saturday sunday night at 10 nick abbott lbc it's 10 30 the news headlines with tim daly nick abbott on lbc call 0345 6060 so, Titchy Suitsize says that in future, those looking to be signed off could be asked to discuss their health with teams of specialist work and health professionals who will assess what work they can do and what they need to bounce back into the workplace. <laughs> and if they can't uh, bounce back, they'll be rolled up into a carpet, thrown in the back of a van and delivered to the workplace. And um, what is a specialist work and health professional, by the way? <laughs> Do you gain the comfort from that description? No. No. A specialist work and health professional. Well, I would imagine that they just uh, ask the first person that passes their door. Uh, excuse me, do you uh, know anything about medicine? Well, I, I, I take a lot of drugs. Great, you're hired. Sunak said, for me, it is a fundamental duty of government to make sure that hard work is always rewarded. I know, and you know, he said, that you don't get anything in life without hard work. Ha! <laughs> said a man who made his first fortune by laying a bet and made his second fortune by marrying it. But please, do go on about hard work. He said, it's the only way to build a better life for ourselves and our family and the only way to build a more prosperous country. Well... Yeah, apart from the sick state of the health service leading to a sick country, there's the work aspect. The promise is that you go to work and your efforts will be rewarded. That's capitalism, that is. But we don't have that anymore. This isn't capitalism. It's 
a sort of twisted oligarchy. The serfs, as lot, do drudge work for not enough to get by on, while the top 0.1% cream off all the profits and squirrel them away in tax havens so they can't do any good for the little people who made the money in the first place, not leprechauns. I mean, why would you want to go to work for less than it costs to put a roof over your head and a meal on the table? working for someone who can't decide which island of theirs to park their yachts next to for the best views of the sunset. Almost half the people in this country that are in receipt of benefits are in work. It's just that their employers don't pay them enough to get by on. So the state has to intervene to stop mass starvation and homelessness. Because mass starvation and homelessness could impact the regime's chances of securing our votes. So we, the people, pick up the slack. We are essentially subsidising multinational corporations who run the world and pay their workers peanuts while they pay peanuts in tax. Suitsize said, uh, since the pandemic, something has gone wrong. <laughs> yep, that's right. I, I think that the something that has gone wrong is... This is government. Yeah, I couldn't have said it better myself. And it was wrong before the pandemic. Hey, eh, Bodge? I... I can't comment on that. I, 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 I... Suitsai said, uh, we now spend £69 billion pounds on benefit for people of working age with a disability or health condition. That's more than our entire school's budget, more than our transport budget, and more than our policing budget. He said, that's not right, it's not sustainable, and it's not fair on the taxpayers who fund it. So in the next parliament, a conservative government will significantly reform and control welfare. That's what he said. And I do believe that the Tories have been saying this for the last 14 years. If only they'd been in power all that time, they might have been able to do something about it. Sunak said, this is not about making the welfare system less generous to people who face very real extra costs from mental health conditions. He says, for those with the greatest needs, we actually want to make it easier to access with fewer requirements. <laughs> Funny, no? No. <laughs> no. He said the government's overall approach is about saying uh, that people with less severe mental health conditions should be expected to engage in the world of work. And the plan is to get people with no medical qualifications to make decisions about someone's ability to, to work. Well, why not? I mean, we've had people with no financial expertise running the Treasury. We've had people who don't know anything about transport running the trains and the buses and the roads. And we've had people that are moral vacuums running the Home Office and people who aren't diplomatic as our top diplomats. My name is Dominic Raab and I'm a Tory. Yeah, totally believe you. So why not have people who don't know anything about medicine making decisions about medicine? Because what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Just when you thought you'd heard it all, uh, another day dawns. Always a surprise. 0345-6060-973. Pas de Calais, Gary. Hello, Nick. Sounds suspiciously uh, French to me, uh, Gary. Yeah, it's been a while. Um, right, there's a couple of things. You know, I spoke to you a couple of times, and uh, I've had a couple of uh, health issues, but what I didn't tell you about was my, my wife. Uh, my wife had cancer, and sadly she died in January. Hang on. Right. What I want to say about is because I see on the television, you know I live in Pas de Calais in France, in the television I saw about the Manchester debacle with this um, a cemetery, uh, this, uh, um, this uh, uh, funeral director who hid the bodies. bodies. Well, when my wife died, in France, you have six days to bury your wife, or your partner, sorry. And so I had six days, I sorted everything out, the thicker of a and all that from where, I'm, where I live. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, uh, I was, uh, we had the church in our village, and it was full up, which is lovely. And uh, I got off, got on, I'm going to the church beforehand, obviously. And, and uh, about, uh, about an hour before I had, I get a phone call from the funeral director and he said, I didn't understand him. I said, look, he was speaking too quickly in French. I said, I'm, I'm, I'll be at the church, I'll be at the church. Um, Gary, I'm, you know, I'm obviously uh, concerned for your circumstance, but does this actually have anything to do with what I was talking about? 
I don't know. I was going to tell you about the funeral directors. Um, um, well, perhaps another time. Uh, thanks, Gary. Dave texts, now the government's outlawed being sick, will they claim there is no waiting list in the NHS as well? Yes, they will uh, determine that it does not exist. In much the same way as Rwanda is a safe country. It's like, it's less a, it's less a prime minister and more a magician. Oh. Archie texts, uh, oh, no, I can't read that, that's dreadful. You're giving me things to read out that I can't possibly read out on the air. That's, uh, what are you, trying to get me fired? Stan text, from small boats to sick notes. Rishi picking on the most vulnerable in society again. He's never had to face adversity in his titchy life. A small man physically and spiritually, says Stan. He's feeling very negative about him. Affirmative. Negative. Uh, Steve says, uh, Liz Truss told that she was... Okay, more stuff that I can't really read out. <laughs> have, I, have I upset you through the glass in some way? 0345 6060 973. Let's have Hull. Hello, Charles. Oh, carrots. Carrots, Nick. And Belgium. Okay, try to fit that in. <laughs> okay. You cannot buy carrots in Hull. I have combed the whole area. You cannot buy carrots for love or money, uh, 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 man or beast. Why is you that? You cannot okay, buy Okay, you can't buy anywhere. carrots. That's what I'm hearing. Around Hull, you can't buy any carrots. Yeah, I heard that exactly. about six or and seven I'm, times and, now. And, and it, I'm fed up now with Brexit. You can't buy carrots because of Brexit? Exactly. You see, in the old days, they'd, they'd sweep the, the more carrots over the, over the water, over the channel, mm. to make up for lack of carrots. I thought we grew carrots here. I thought that was our thing. I, I talked to this woman. She said uh, they've all been flooded wait, out. Wait a minute. What woman? Uh, oh, um, uh, well, the woman at the counter in Sainsbury's. Oh, right. what does she know? <laughs> uh, well, uh, I take every word that, that she says. Okay then. <laughs> but also, I'm 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 getting fed up now. And and you know what? In Belgium, you had the Suella and the Nigella Lovin. The Suella they, they and on stage the... oh, together. Oh, oh, oh! Well, as long as they're together in the same place, they're more easily to avoid the both of them. Well, put it this way: put me in an Antwerpian. Uh, uh, police suit mm. and, a, and a pepper spray in one hand and handcuffs in the other. I'm going through that door and nobody's going to stop me from getting to that stage where they're on there. Right. You, you, I think Antwerp. You, you do sound like an Antwerp, Charles, when, when, you, <laughs> well, when you say yeah, things you like know, that. You know, I, but basically, I'm fed up with Brexit. Fed up with Brexit. All right. On the, on the other hand... Brexit's going great. So there is that. Thanks a lot, Charles. Can't get any carrots. Can you believe that? Very, very angry about that whole carrot issue. Mark says, like me, you're a music buff, and you mentioned recently you like Underworld's Barbara Barbara, We, sh we Face a Shining Future, which might be the, wor the world's worst title for an album. I can never remember the name of that album. It's the grey one, which has got Luna, 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 Luna on it. He says, it's quality. Quick question, is there a band that are no longer around that you don't see live that you really wish you had? Mine is the uh, Beastie Boys, says Mark. Well, I didn't ask Mark, but, um, yes. Uh, uh, Joe Walsh in about 1974. Love to see Joe Walsh in about 1974. Yes, please, but he's uh, with the Eagles now. Boring! <laughs> And the tickets cost about a thousand pounds each, and he only plays two songs of his during the set, and I'm not paying a thousand pounds to hear Joe Walsh play two songs. I just won't. Besides, in in in, in between it all, it'll be uh, you know taking it easy and all of that country stuff. So it's a big no from me. O three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Has any part of this show made sense yet? No. O three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Text eight four eight five oh. Email Nick A at lbc.co.uk. If you're on Twitter it's at LBC. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at ten. Nick Abbott, LBC.
Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. Nobody. Anne says Titchy Suitsides has never had a respectable job in his life. Well, <laughs> I think being the Prime Minister of this country used to be a respectable job, eh? I, I can't comment on that. I, 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 yeah, I, I, and then it all went wrong. Yeah. Never had a respectable job in his life, says Anne. Betting on the markets is not respectable, for goodness sake. That's all he's ever done. As far as I'm aware, that is all he's ever done. <laughs> to the point that he really has no idea what people are like. Imagine going to a homeless shelter and asking somebody who is homeless if they're in business. <laughs> he had absolutely no other way of relating to that person. Are you in business? How asinine and silly a thing is that to say? And he's the Prime Minister of this country. You believe that? Rob says, I've been suffering from depression, which at times means I cannot work or need time off. I've asked for NHS talking therapists to try to help myself three months ago. I'm still waiting for an appointment. You're right. What you say about people becoming unwell and the broken NHS is making it worse. Get the Tories out, says Rob. <laughs> but that's just the depression talking, Rob. Everything is fine, really. <laughs> And Chris says, I have just woken from a 10-year coma and found that Will from the Inbetweeners is our Prime Minister. What the hell happened, says Chris. Well, Chris, it's, it's worse than that, because this guy used to be our Prime Minister. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, 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 wait. And it's worse than that, because this person used to be our Prime Minister. I'm genuinely unclear. <laughs> the stuff you've missed. <laughs> So, in order to gain your support, Rishi Sunak said, in the next parliament, a conservative government will significantly reform and control welfare. He said, this is not about making the welfare system less generous to people who face real extra costs from mental health conditions. For those with the greatest needs, we actually want to make it easier to access the money. <laughs> 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 yeah, right. Ah, uh, Work and Pension Secretary. Oh, this should be a pop quiz. Work and Pension Secretary. Anyone? Anyone at all? If I gave you the first name, would it help? Mel? No. No, not helping. Mel Stride. Ah. Mel Stride told this station, if you look at issues like long-term sickness, disability, and you add up the costs of all the benefits there, you get about £69 billion, he said, which is about um, two test and trace apps worth, isn't it? £69 billion. Pounds. And there is no alternative to reform, he said. Well, there is an alternative. The alternative is spending the money on fixing the NHS, which used to be rated the world's number one health service when the Tories took over in 2010 and had the best satisfaction ratings in its history and is now a broken wreck that can't even be relied on to treat an emergency, let alone something that is keeping you from work. But why get bogged down in the argument? Because it's nothing new. We've been here before. It'll be single mothers next. Maybe this signals a turn in their approach. They've tried the war on woke and it's fizzled out, really. I mean, they couldn't get us to be permanently angry about flags or scones. And it's all so much small beer. Bring out the big, bun the, the, uh, big guns, those poorer than you. It's like re-releasing the classics. It's not those above you on the ladder pushing you down, it's those beneath you pulling you down. Ain't that right, Smug? My view. Yes, we know. But don't take it from me. Work and Pensions Secretary Mel Stride said higher spending on welfare is adding to the pressures for people to be paying more taxation. It's not the government that's putting taxation higher than at any time since numbers were invented. It's those people on the ladder beneath you. No! That's it. Keep hold of that anger vote Conservative. Remember, the Conservative Party that brought you high taxes is the party of low taxes. What? <laughs> Up is down and black is white. Look deeply into my eyes. You are getting very sleepy. In his speech, Sunak said, we don't just need to change the sick note, we need to change the sick note culture so that the default becomes what work you can do, not what you can't. And the trouble is, he may have a, the germ of a point there. Even if he is totally ignoring the fact that the state of a health service will impact directly 
on the state of the nation's health. And that all that ails the country is the fault of the party that has been leading it since 2010. I'm sure some people do need a nudge to get off benefits, as meagre as they are. And I'm sure that some people can work that are claiming that they can't. But the trouble is, we don't believe in him. And we don't believe in the Tory party anymore. Look at the ratings. We're now at the point, after 14 years of being ruled by this party, that we automatically assume the worst in anything they say or do. And it's not from nothing. It's not us being mean. It's the direct result of what they've done to us day after day and year after year. So now, when they say that they are trying to help us, we're checking our wallets still there afterwards. When they say that they are only attempting to help the sick get work, we assume that they are going to force the sick to do work on threat of having all their money stopped, thereby condemning them in all likeliness to more sickness and potentially homelessness and death. What a place to be! When we little people think so badly of our government that we dismiss out of hand any thought that they might actually be trying to do the right thing rather than do the right thing that they think will make them the most money and garner the most votes from people who think that bad luck is the fault of the person suffering it. The PM said there's a growing body of evidence that good work can actually improve mental and physical health. Well, you don't need a growing body of evidence. That's something someone says when they don't have any evidence. It's just logical. Give someone a good job that pays well and they will feel better than if they're sitting at home staring at the wall worrying about the bills. But the key part to that is pay well. It's all about the money, honey. And we know what the government thinks of people trying to take a little of the wealth that they create rather than just work dead-end jobs for not quite enough to get by. We know because they've spent the past few years doing everything they can to strip the unions of any power they've got, making it more and more difficult to take action to improve the workers' lives. When Bodge used to yak on about wanting a high-wage, high-skill economy, what he meant was a low-skill, low-wage economy of delivery scooter riders biking pizzas around town, filling all the roles that Europeans used to come here to do before we insisted that they leave. And if you think that the idea is to do what's best for the off-sick, to lend them a helping hand and no doubt uh, to a um, Tory donating company that coincidentally gets the job of passing medical opinions they have no knowledge or experience of, then I have a genuine made-in-China Italian suit I'd like to sell you. If you think that they're only doing what's best for the off-sick. And the chief executive of the mental health charity uh, mind, Dr. Sarah Hughes, said in her response to this news, we are deeply disappointed that the Prime Minister's speech continues a trend in recent rhetoric which conjures up the image of a mental health culture that has gone too far. Dr. Hughes said this is harmful, inaccurate and contrary to the reality for people up and down the country. The truth is that mental health services are at breaking point following years of underinvestment, with many people getting increasingly unwell while they wait to receive support. She said to imply that it is easy both to be signed off work and then access benefits is deeply damaging. It's insulting to the 1.9 million people on a waiting list to get mental health support and to the GPs whose expert judgment is being called into question. But then Dr. Sarah Hughes is just a doctor and not someone who doesn't know anything about medicine that the government is keen to replace GPs with. What a way to run a country, eh? Dreadful. 0345-6060-973. And by the way, when uh, your MP goes off sick, they don't get sick pay. They get their normal pay in full, 100% of it, regardless of how little work they do. And they only do three and a half days a week. And they get paid a quarter of a million pounds in expenses on top of their 80 grand salary. <laughs> Regardless of what they're doing, appearing on right-wing news channels every day or um, writing the Book of Wines, that's W-H-I-N-E-S, not the other sort. Booze. 0345 973 Let's see now. Uh, Oldbury, Ranjit. 
Hi, Nicky. You're right. Yes, good, thanks. OK, you know how Sunak just dishes everybody he doesn't like, yeah? He should go home and ask what his dad has been doing for the living for the last few years. He's a GP, my, of my understanding, isn't it? Uh, I have no idea his if he's still a GP. GP. Well, he used to be a GP. Used to be, yeah? right, OK. Yeah, so he's saying that these GPs don't know what they're doing. Yeah, when they're signing people off. I guess that is the yeah. inference of what he's saying, yes. Yes, yeah, so you need Might to... Might want to discuss to, that, he, yes. He, he needs to discuss it with his dad. Dad, have you ever faked somebody's sickness so they can get benefits? Yeah, <laughs> that's the first thing, right? <laughs> well, the, it's, worse than, it's worse than that. He's not. I don't think he's accusing them of faking it. I think he's accusing them of not knowing what they're doing. So he's going to replace them with somebody who genuinely doesn't know what they're doing. <laughs> So, you're going to get a kid out of university, right? That's going to say, right, Mr. Abbott, we understand that... I seriously doubt... I, I'm going to stop you right there. I doubt that they'll get anybody out of university. I think they'll probably get them out of Greg's. No offence to Greg's, but they'll be serving a, uh, a, okay. a, a yeah, tasty that, and delicious okay. pastry one day and deciding on someone's mental, he mental health the next. OK, they'll say, Ranji, you're tired of running your chippy now, right? We're going to get you to be a medical examiner, yes. right? So I'll say, Mr Abbott, I'm mm -hmm. going to assess you, your ability to yes. work. Yes, yeah? and what's the assessment? And, and your assessment is, I understand you've only got half a leg left. I understand you've only got one arm. Yes. You've got no ears. That's very, very, very small brain. Yes. Yeah, and, you know, can you press a button to open the shutter? Yes, right, you're fit enough for, to work, that means I'm going to stop your benefits. That's what happens. Right? Press a button got, to open a shutter. What kind of job yeah. is that? Shutter opener. Shutter opener, that means you are a qualified shutter opener. I wow. don't have to pay you benefits, right? I had no idea then, I had so many skill. Yeah, then you go for an appeal, yeah, and you'll win your appeal. But while you're waiting for your appeal... I've gone running up to my boss. Oh, I've taken Mr. Abbott off the disabled list. Now, yeah. that's all the money you've saved. You're going to go into a spiral of being sick and sicker and sicker, and you're going to... You don't know what you're going to do. That's what these people are now... A, they're all they're a doing swirling is dividing and rolling. eddy yeah. of, of uh, yeah. nightmare proportions. Yeah, well, uh, other than that, uh, Ranjit, how's things going? <laughs> OK. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Yeah, things are going OK. Not not that bad, you know, considering. All right, thanks for that. 0345 6060 973. Text 84850. Email nicka at lbc.co.uk. If you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10. Nick Abbott, LBC. LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. Shut up. A big sack of monkey nuts. Yes, it's a big sack of monkey nuts, and I'm doing with it the best I can. Trust me, I'm an expert. <laughs> Benny says, you know what they'll do, Nick? There'll be fewer criteria, but the government will bring in a piece of secondary legislation after declaring all mental health conditions safe conditions and disapplying their human rights. Yeah, and give them a good thrashing while they're at it. <laughs> uh, Olivia says, if employers were forced to pay decent sick pay, then the government wouldn't have to cover the bill. But they probably think that's communism. Exactly right, yes. It's communism when you help the many. But it is, um, it's not communism or, or indeed socialism when you help the few. When we cover the uh, shortfall that multinational corporations uh, pay people who work for them, when we, the little people, are forced to pay the difference to uh, make it uh, a, an income that they can survive on, that's, uh, th that's socialism for corporations, and that's fine. As long as you're giving money to people who already have millions of pounds, then that's just fine. If you start giving money to uh, the poor, then they start freaking out. What? Yeah, can't stand that. That is uh, socialism, that is. That's Jeremy Corbyn. That is... Boo! Uh, Glasgow. Hello, Rebecca. Hi, how are you? Good, thanks. Good, good. Um, I just wanted to talk about this whole fiasco of Rishi Sunak's. Don't you think this is his new voter ID plan? He's going to penalise everybody in order to catch a tiny minority 
of slackers or people who don't really want to be at work. So he's going to penalise anybody who's sick or disabled. I think at this point you have to keep in mind that um, outside of a miracle, the Conservative Party are not going to be in power in the next government. So it doesn't really matter what they say they're going to do. They can, I'm going to this and I'm going to that, until they're blue in the face. But True. they're not actually going to have to go through with uh, any of this stuff. So I, I think the, you have to look at it in the t in the terms of how does it look? How does it make you feel? Not what, not will it work, like the Rwanda thing. I don't think the, R the Rwanda thing is about Rwanda at all. It's about the struggle to get people on mm -hmm. that plane. It's not about yeah. getting them on the plane. It's about, well, we were trying to get people on the plane and then some enemy of the people judges insisted that we didn't uh, backed mm -hmm. up by lefty lawyers and uh, you know this is a constant whining victimhood that they get into so i don't think yeah. this, this uh, they have any intention of actually going through with any of this nor nor do they actually believe that they'll have to because they're going to be uh, you know out in the rear in uh, well whatever it is well, they, they, I was reading on Twitter that there was um, a man from the Department of Work and Pensions that said that they're going to accelerate the um, the migration of everybody on ESA to um, universal credit. Now, Hunt had said back was it last 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 autumn statement or the one before mm. that ESA was going to remain in place until twenty twenty eight. Um, but now the same man's come back when I asked whether this is, you know, going against what the Chancellor said. He said that it makes sense and some report said that it made sense to bring it forward. So apparently everybody like me who's on ESA is going to get a letter by December of this year explaining what's going to be happening um, to their benefit. So who knows? Yeah, but knows? by December this year then um, it's entirely possible that we'll have a new regime. Thank God. Because <laughs> at the end of the day, if you think about it, I mean, the taxpayers are going to have to pay double for these assessments because some poor person who's not well is going to go along to their GP. The GP is then going to have to send them along to be assessed by somebody of right. equal qualification no, or less. No, it won't be equal qualification. No, it won't. No. Where are they going to find them? They can't. They, we don't have enough GPs as it is. They're going to find a whole new army of GPs. Where, well, where that's from? The thing. Are they go, I was thinking, are they going to cut GPs numbers because they're they're going to be employing all no. these other people? They're going to give it yeah. out. To, they'll, they'll give it. They give the job to an outsourcing company who has coincidental links with the Conservative Party. I, was going to say, is that I a bunch betcha. Of buddies? And um, and then the outsourcing company is going to hire as cheap an army of people as they possibly can and then give them a script to work from. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the end, computer will either say yes or no, depending, no. On, depending on whether they've met their targets or not. And if they yeah. haven't, then it will probably say no. Yeah, oh, no doubt say no. They'll decide on your an case. Appeal, an appeal. Yeah, yeah, they'll decide on your case before you've even walked through the door, based on, on what targets they have to meet. Yep. I mean, I don't know that that's a, a, what's going to happen, but we find us, I find myself in the position of thinking the worst of anything that, that, that any of them say after 14 years of um, being proved right all the time. Yeah, I think he just wants to get people to froth yeah. um, and and go against somebody else because of all the bad news that's been in the, in the press. I'll tell you what's coming next, Rebecca. It's single mothers. Oh, me again then. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I can't get a break. Yeah. At least it's not raining in Glasgow. Yeah, for a couple of days, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Silver yeah, linings. Brilliant. All right. Thanks a lot, Rebecca. 0345 6060 973. Benny texts, you know what they'll do, Nick? Uh, there will be fewer criteria, but the government, uh, I believe I've read that one. Pretty sure I have. I'm getting deja vu. Olivia says, if employers were forced to... No, read that one. Mark says, last Friday you were asking why pigeons bob their heads when they walk. It is because they have eyes in the side of their heads, so they don't have binocular vision. The head bobbing lets them use motion parallax to gauge depth. Yeah, I seriously doubt that. I think it's just because their uh, wing bone's connected to their leg bone. Or something like that. I mean, they're, um, you know, they're, they're prepped to fly, but not necessarily to walk. Other birds, 
that are less fat, they bob about. They sort of bounce about on both legs, with a, but pigeons uh, attempt to walk, uh, but don't really get it right. And I think you'll find that that is a fact. And even if it isn't, it doesn't mean it's not correct. Orpington, Tony. Hello. Tony, Tony, Tony. Oh, I was going to say, um, oh, I don't know how you do it, but, oh, God, yes, oh. Um, you don't know I how I do it? Well, that's very personal. Uh, no, 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 is it, uh, hey, Mickey, you're so fine, you're fine, you're blah, blah, Ricky. Yes, Tony. Uh, yes, um, I want to talk to you about temporary accommodation. Mm-hmm. Absolute nightmare. Uh, I'm only here because of section, but you, you've you confused, not you've confused me, I think you're doing a great job regarding uh, mental health and stuff, and I'm so glad that you um, talked about that in the last half an hour, which I've been waiting for, which is fine. Um, and, um, yeah, more needs to be done about it. What do you think about the situation? I'll get on it first thing in the morning. <laughs> How does that oh, sound? Oh, come on, no, no, because I got a bit emotional, to be honest, when I was listening to your conversations with um, other people and stuff like that. Yeah, my diatribe. And we had, mm, my, we had to my fishy, rant. well... Yes, we had Fishy Sunak today giving his speech. Was it about half past 9 a.m. this morning? About war on sickness? Yeah, <laughs> war on sickness. <laughs> yeah, it, no, honestly, war on sickness, that's mm. what it is. Yeah. It's a disgrace because, you it's, know. It's not I, war on. I no, no, I'll, I have to stop you there. It's not war on sickness, it's war on the sick. Different. <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, I, I think that's the same. Uh, it may no, be, it isn't. Like, a war on sickness would be improving the health service. A war on the sick is something else entirely. Now that you explain that like that, yeah. it makes utter complete sense to yeah. me. Um, can, that's can why you, I need more people can, like you in my life. Can you explain it to me? Because I'm um, totally bemused. It's a disgrace, to be honest, because, yeah. um, and I don't want to get emotional on the phone. But. Um, I had, about a few years ago, which I couldn't tell even my family um, about, well, I was diagnosed with HIV, um, and I, there's a lot of people who don't know about that now, and I'm now getting, um, you know, I used to work up until the age of 26, and stuff like that, and I can't even, like, I hope they're not listening, to be honest, because... I can't even tell them, and then I, I and it wonders, uh, and the, the mental health issue is that it's not the fact that I'm ashamed of it, it's about the fact of people knowing and stuff like that, and it's had such a detrimental impact on me. I don't have, and, you know, I have my football refereeing and stuff like that, and it's been an absolute nightmare and stuff like that, and I'm not ashamed of it, and I'm glad that I've pulled up, but when I hear people like that, who, you know, what have you just said before? Um, they have not got a clue, and it, it, it just... Well, I think Rishi Sunak has uh, taken not having a clue to an art form. I mean, he's, he's, I totally all, he's almost like a, a modern art masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> somebody, should, no. somebody should put him on a plinth. I hope so. Yeah, all right. Thanks a lot, Tony. 0345 973 John says, if the Tory sick note scheme tells someone with a mental illness or physical problems to work with advice from one of their experts and an accident or a death occurred from their actions, a legal case against the government by a person backed by a medical pr uh, practitioner could cost millions and scupper this scheme. Yeah, unless they uh, decide to shield the government and the uh, uh, outsourcing company from any such actions, which I believe that they probably will. Problem solved. Simon says, the questions will be things like, can you raise your right hand? <laughs> if so, you are able to answer phones. What if you answer your phone with your left hand, Simon? Yeah, you didn't think of that, did you? Put that in your computer. A different Simon says, you can imagine these so-called health professionals will earn a bonus if they force, say, 15% or more sick people back into work. How much will it cost to run such a disgusting and immoral operation? says uh, Simon. And you, you have to, when you pronounce the word disgusting, you have to use it, uh, uh, you have to do it with a Z. Because disgusting doesn't sound very disgusting, does it? 
0345-6060-973, Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10, Nick Abbott, LBC. This is LBC. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345-6060-973. Everything is going extremely well. Everything is going extremely well. Don't imagine that it isn't for a second. Phil texts, tax on the homeless. That's what we need. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it makes as much sense as uh, finding them for being homeless, yes. Paul says, the cheek of the Prime Minister, talking about the work-shy sick notes, when he allowed Doris to not work while claiming a wage is actually worse than him pretending to wear his kids' trainers. <laughs> if I hear one more word about uh, it itchy uh, Sunak's trainers, I'm going to scream. I genuinely will do that. Don't tempt me. Maidstone, hello, Joan. Hello there. Hello there. <laughs> Hello there. Um, a few years ago, when I believe Ian Duncan Smith was in charge... Oh, Ian Duncan I Smith. I was no! equally yeah. horrible, nasty scheme when many people actually died on his watch. Um, I took my one of my uh, relatives, highly talented, autistic, and uh, he got Top marks distinction at his art college. Took him along to the job centre. A woman there didn't even open his portfolio. And um, she was so rough on him, one way and another, wanting to send him, uh, you know, to one of these dead-end jobs, where's all he wanted. Because he was so talented, extremely talented, um, when she didn't open his portfolio. Um, she, she looked distressed. He didn't even notice that. And uh, he went out of the room for a moment and uh, she, I told her, I said, do you realise how much you've upset him? He has his, you know, vision, his art, his, everything. I said, you didn't even open his portfolio. And uh, when, you know, I really gave her a roasting. <laughs> when he came back, um, she said to him, um, come back next time without your grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> without and your, without your bouncer, her. yeah. And then later on, when she phoned up to say, um, where was he, she, you know, where, where was he, because he didn't turn up, she said, I can't close my portfolio. I said, tough. <laughs> And these people were being paid a massive amount of money. And that was a person that presumably wasn't supposedly an expert in their uh, field. Yeah. Right, yeah. so what, we, what we're about to have is worse than that because we're going to have inexperts in their field, people who don't have any experience of it in any way, shape or form. They can't pretend otherwise. We don't have enough GPs, we don't have enough consultants and we don't have enough mental health professionals to deal with people in the NHS. So how are they going to find anybody that knows what they're talking about to say whether people are, uh, are or are not due for um, receipt of benefits? Yeah, but another thing which happened was we had to go and see somebody else under the grand scheme. And uh, they said, well, uh, why? You know, they wanted to send him along to a psychologist. Mm. He's very articulate, no problem. I, I said, what? You know, what's his meaning of a psychologist? Well, to see if he is happy working with others or alone. I said, he's sitting here. Ask <laughs> Just him. ask him. <laughs> ask him. So anyway, we had to go off to see this psychologist who is probably being paid matters of money. Oh, that's where and all the money is, yeah, psychologist. Yeah, yeah, yeah psychologist. <laughs> and uh, he asked all sorts of questions. I said, he said to him, he said, why are you asking me all this? All I wanted was a job in yeah. the art. And... <laughs> When I wrote back afterwards and told this psychologist what I thought of him, he <laughs> said, well, if there's any problem, please send him back again. Right. <laughs> Just, life. Yeah, just don't you come personally. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. Good for you, Joan. Don't take no for an answer. Thanks a lot. Cheers, my dear. 0345 6060 973. Louise texts, have you heard that in Germany, the health minister is an actual doctor? 
Crazy idea, I know, says Louise. Yeah, in uh, other better-run countries, they put people in positions of power over uh, fields in which they have some experience or expertise. Isn't that incredible? It's almost uh, as though that's a good way to run a country. Simon says, so they want to hammer welfare, tax more, remove the NHS, not build any housing, criminalise the homeless, etc. What idiot would vote for that? <laughs> square one with Labour, please, <laughs> says Simon. Yeah, I think square one sounds, uh, sounds like an excellent destination right now. Hands up who's uh, for square one. Uh, East Yorkshire, hello, Mike. Hi, Nick, how are you doing? Good, thanks. Good, good, yeah. Um, slightly different angle on this. I've talked to quite a few people about what Sumac said in his little speech this morning. And one thing that came back was that he was patronising, mm -hmm. he was moralising. Yes. It was almost like he will listen to us peasants. <laughs> and, and, that, and that really annoyed people, forget the context. Yeah. That really annoyed people. Yeah, well, he's a very annoying person. Yeah, he, he does not come across well. I mean, he has got no comprehension or understanding no. of benefit systems, unemployment, or even failure. I'll, I'll go wider than that, Mike. P people. He doesn't have any uh, empathy or understanding of people. It's like he's never met one before. No, quite right. I mean, it, it really is appalling. But, but the other thing that struck me was that just imagine, compare what he's doing. He wants to save money by forcing sick people back to work. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's just have a run a comparison. We've got another problem in the UK, which is potholes. Now, just imagine him looking at potholes and saying, look, all this money that's getting paid in compensation for tyres and rims and mm. suspensions, what we'll, I can solve that. What we'll do is make a law banning compensation for damage caused <laughs> Problem potholes. solved, yeah. Problem solved instead of solving the potholes. The problem. Instead of solving yeah. sickness and what have you. And you also said earlier on about people being in positions where they are totally unsuitable. Mm -hmm. I once got invited to Westminster to advise on apprenticeships, and I ended up with two guys, two advisors, in the Department of Education, and they put forward this plan, and I said, can't work, 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 completely ridiculous, forget it, start again. And they got really annoyed with me, and I said, look, I've been in this business for 20 years, been yeah. an apprentice, managed apprentices, taught apprenticeships. Right, please listen to me. And they wouldn't. And I said, what, where have you, what's your life story? Where, uh, one public school, one private school, went to Oxford, <laughs> did PPE, yeah. then there were bad carriers for the Conservatives, mm -hmm. then there were advisors in the Department of Education. Yeah. And I said, what the hell do you know about apprenticeships? And they got annoyed with me. No. Really? <laughs> and I got pulled out of the meeting. I went back and I explained to them again. And I said, look, please listen. You do not know what you speak here. They implemented that plan in 2012, Nick. And it bent and crashed. Because you've got people in there advising the minister on something they knew nothing about. Yeah, that's the shocking it's part, is that the people who were advising them don't know anything about it either. It's just that the people who are ministers know so little about it that they don't realise that the people who are advising them don't know anything about it. No, quite so. And the other thing is, why do you get people to come down and advise on something when you've already formulated a plan? You don't have to get people in from the industry to explain how it works. It's before you formulate the plan. No, I think no. that the idea is that they wanted you to go in and tell them that they were doing the right thing. Uh, if you had done that, then you would have probably left with um, a box of chocolates and a bunch of flowers. But as you didn't <laughs> tell them that the decision that they had already arrived at was a good thing to do, then they put their fingers in their ears and hummed loudly and hoped that you'd just leave the room. Yeah, what a way to run a country. What a way to run a country, eh? Dreadful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, just a funny one. Did you see what one of the jurors who was rejected in Trump's case, mm. um, she'd been rejected and interviewed her, and they said, what did you think about Trump? And she said, he wasn't nearly as orange as I expected him to be. <laughs> Don't be rude. Yellow. He was yellow. <laughs> I did notice that, uh, the, the picture that they had of him looking furious in court. It did. His skin did look unusually human-like. Yeah, 
certainly more yellow than orange. Yeah, maybe he doesn't put on uh, makeup for court appearances. Maybe he's in court so much that the makeup bill would be so huge that he leaves them off whenever he goes in, into uh, court. Maybe that's it, yeah. All okay. right, thanks a lot, Mike. What I don't really understand is um, the uh, in America, people of uh, a certain disposition, those people, like, uh, lo not like, love, worship a man with, um, uh, whose uh, hair has got uh, so much uh, hairspray, he's almost uh, causing global warming all by himself. And um, makeup that he must put on in a, with a trowel, and he dances to YMCA by the village people. And they love him. Explain that to me. 0345 6060 973. Let's see now who's been waiting the longest. Uh, this one right here, Glasgow. Hello, Stephen. Hi, hi there, Nick. It's a pleasure to speak to you again. Just a couple of three things. Okay. The very first thing is thank you for putting me on to the Beyonce country music album. You know, I listened Absolutely to her previous album. I listened to her previous album because she's all new to me. I mean, I, I know a couple of the hit singles. Who doesn't? But I listened to the previous album and it was uninteresting. But the I the country agree. album is is all sorts of different styles. It really is. It really is a great piece of work. I think. Yeah, I was utterly shocked myself that I, that I actually that I actually took to it, and I, yeah. I, I, just, I just thought it was fantastic. Were you dancing around your uh, abode there, Stephen? Uh, yeah, and my Glasgow tenement building. Yeah, can uh, you uh, the, the, the tenements were jumping? Can you get up and do <laughs> as a, a a short twerk? While you're explaining uh, your second well, two points, I don't know if I could do that because Mister Sunak might take me off the sick. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. was just a joke there. You want to close the <laughs> curtains before you uh, twerk, even in the uh, comfort of your own lounge, yeah. Anyway, but yeah, what's I up? Was, I was mainly phoning about Mr. I mean, the house... I, I, I've phoned you a couple of times, Nick, mm -hmm. since I go on a Love and LBC, and it's your show that I love, and I, I just can't understand how cruel can these Tories get that, that they're attacking people that have got nothing... And they're attacking Angela Rayner for possibly oh. avoiding, and we don't even know, a few thousand pounds. That thing is just so everybody, ridiculous. Everybody that backs the Tory party, all the people that own the papers and all that, are basically tax avoiders. I mean... Well, when, when you've only got a few, when you've only got a few billion pounds to your name, uh, every little helps. You want to... Keep exactly. a hold of that, uh, every point, every little it's... penny. Pennies make pounds. Don't forget that. Mm -hmm. I I heard three points at the beginning. I think I've heard two so far. Oh, oh, oh the, and the third one is about Glasgow's weather today. Oh we yes, had a lovely day today. I was out in shorts and t-shirts, no. and I went up to my local high street to buy a loaf of bread, mm -hmm. and. I went over. I'm too warm here to get a loaf of bread. I'll need to get into farm foods to go get next to the chillers so that I could chill down. <laughs> so, yeah. So I had a wee walk about farm foods, even though I didn't need anything for farm foods. Other, right, you just, you just went in there to cool available. down because it was such yeah. a hot day in Glasgow. Yeah, yeah I, I, I believe you, Stephen. Millions wouldn't, but I do. Thanks for that. 0345 6060 973. You can text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. If you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. By the way, if you um, want to listen to this show as a podcast, you can. We take uh, the news and most of the ads out, mostly, which means it takes less time to listen to. You'll use less electricity, and by that method, you'll do your bit to protect the environment. It's exclusive to Global Player. If you haven't got it, get it from uh, globalplayer.com or your app store. And uh, if you've got one of them stupid smart speakers, then the magic phrase is play Nick Abbott the whole show podcast. The Friday and Saturday night shows get stuck up the internet as a podcast uh, and they uh, stay there forever as opposed to the, li the listen again service, which uh, will disappear those shows in about a week. But um, ask for it by name on an internet near you. The uh, Nick Abbott, the whole show podcast. 11.30, the news headlines with Tim Daly. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. Now, wait a minute.
I don't like that kind of talk. Now, just stop it. It upsets me. Belinda texts, Sunak is an idiot, says Belinda. If he wants to implement removing the issuing of sick certificates to patients and give it to outside parties, this is a recipe for disaster. You just simply cannot tell someone that they are not suffering from stress or depression. Well, just because you can't tell someone that they're not suffering from uh, stress or depression doesn't mean that they won't tell somebody that they're not suffering from stress or depression. I betcha, betcha, betcha. And Tristan says, have you seen the video of Rishi Sunak where he says he likes stacking the dishwasher and making the bed? <laughs> it's the fakest thing I've ever seen, says Tristan. I would be surprised if he even knows what a dishwasher is. Oh, he knows what a dishwasher is, all right. She's called Svetlana, and she's part of a group of people who come and do for him on a daily basis. 0345 Putney, hello, Joe. Hey, hello. Joe. Yes. Well, I wish that, um, what do you call him, Titchy Suit Size, mm -hmm. was a lot more outraged and a lot more vehemently uh, interested in making work pay for people because things have got so ridiculously expensive. I mean, yeah. he wouldn't have noticed, of course. Um, that... <laughs> He has noticed, you know, I mean, and we know that he's noticed, because he's, he and his um, acolytes are lying to us about what inflation is, hoping that we're too yeah. stupid to understand that. If inflation is going up, that does not yeah. mean that food prices are going down. Even if inflation itself goes down, things are still going up in price. But he hopes that we don't know that. I mean, I, I, and, and every time he says it, you think, this is a guy who does finance for a living. He knows what an inflation rate is. And he knows that if last year if food prices were going up 15% and this year yeah. they're going up 4%, it doesn't mean that we've got more money in our pockets. He knows that no. that's a lie. And yet he continues okay. to say it. Well, isn't it just a pity that he's not so passionate about giving people a living wage? And when I say living wage, I'm, I mean a living wage. Not just yeah. saying, oh, this is a living wage. Right. Because... Things are just so ridiculously expensive now. I'm afraid to say it, but, you know, a lot of people that are on these kind of benefits are probably way too scared to come off of them and try and actually get work because, number one, that work won't pay. Number two, they might not be, han they might not be able to handle going back to a full-time job. You know, it is possible to want to work, but finding it's just, you know... I haven't done this for such a long time that, you know, it's, it's yeah, you can't really, really difficult. Exactly. You can't just bounce out of it and into work. Well... He did actually use uh, that word, bounce. Uh, well, he also asked the homeless guy if he was in business, yeah, didn't he? So he, did, yeah. he hasn't really got much of a clue about Clueless. a lot of things. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, less of a clue. He understands spreadsheets so, and he understands uh, moving numbers about on a screen and he understands uh, betting on other people's misfortunes to make a vast sum mm -hmm. for himself. All that he, he totally oh. gets. Anything else like um, that's uh, more associated with human beings, that's just a total mystery to him. And you can tell that it is just by watching his um, toe-curlingly embarrassing interactions with the general public. With ordinary people. Yeah, ordinary people. people. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, I just hope that this is not going to result, uh, God forbid, in anyone, you know, getting, well, harmed by, you know, being sanctioned or whatever. Or It would be great if some people did actually get back into work. That paid. Yeah. So they can still pay their bills and not be, you know terrified every month oh gosh i haven't right. made enough to cover this that or the other and they don't find Whereas, that they're working 40 hours a week or or more than that they're doing two jobs and still not making enough to pay the rent on a dismal flat and to put uh, a, a meager meal on their table once a day which is what people are actually suffering from in this country because the yeah. the government seems to think that because they are these people, that the people who are in the, the C-suites, the chief executives, that they should earn all of the money that their companies make. And that um, I actually heard, uh, was it Elon Musk or, or one, one of these uh, bazillionaires, he called mm -hmm. their workers the, the, the human tax. In other words, a tax 
that the people who own the companies have to pay in order to make their money. They just they, they just see us as a, a, an inconvenience and will be replaced as soon as possible with robots. Affirmative. As soon as they can, they're going to fire the mm. lot of us. Well, you know, <laughs> hopefully, if they if they really are going to fire the lot of us, and then there is no actual work because robots are doing it all, mm -hmm. then they're going to have to introduce some kind of universal basic income, well, aren't they? And then we can all sit back and be lazy gits like they think we always were. No, that's a that's a big word. Have they'll have to do that? I very much doubt that they will do anything of the sort. What they'll do is that they'll spend a tiny portion of the money that they should be doling out to us in a universal basic income. They'll spend a tiny portion on propaganda and um, uh, uh, and uh, advertising that makes us want to blame somebody else for the circumstance that we find ourselves in. Uh, thanks a lot, Joe. 0345 6060 973. I mean, I want to think positively about, you know, something... Because uh, it can't possibly be that every single thing that this administration does is evil. It can't be. Uh, so I want to believe in, in the good of something that they do. But they're just not meeting me halfway. I mean, come on, I'm trying here. <laughs> Dave says, is Titchy so blind to his demise that the vultures are, man are manoeuvring all the runners and riders are positioning to replace him after a massacre? Wow, this, this whole thing has got not one single comma or full stop or uh, anything in it. So it's, it would be a bit breathless. In fact, I think if I tried to read it as it's written, I'd pass out by the end of it. <gasps> is Titchy so blind to his demise the vultures are manoeuvring all the runners and riders are positioning to replace him after a massacre in the local May elections? Why doesn't he call a GE now to put a stop to the whole sorry saga? Plus, at the e, at least end with a bit of dignity as well as doing the right thing for the country is beyond me. Says <laughs> Dave. Wow. That was like some sort of test. Do I pass the test? No. <laughs> I guess I'm too sick to work then. Uh, James says, AI will decide who is and who is not eligible. That's correct. Yes, they will. Because whoever they get, this... Um, uh, what's the phrase that he used? Specialist teams. So they're they're going to have specialist teams. Oh, no. <laughs> That's, that sounds convincing, doesn't it? No. Not really. They ha they're going to have specialist teams to assess the work that people can do. And they will have no medical experience. And we know that that's true because we don't have enough medical professionals as it is. Never mind about uh, inventing this whole new uh, uh, um, section of uh, medical um, work that uh, previously was not being done. Medics can't do the work that they've already got. Never mind about loading them with all this stuff. So they're not going to be experts. Well, they may be experts in other things. Who knows? They might be experts in welding or burger flipping. I have no idea. But they won't be medical experts, because where will they get them from? So your future is about to be decided by a non-expert. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Ugh... It's painful. Plymouth. Hello, Julie. Hello, Nick. Happy weekend. Happy weekend. Oh, thank you. Oh, gosh. Reptile Rishi, and apologies to any of your listeners that have a lovely reptile. He is just, he's the pits, isn't he? It's, it's so disgusting. Disgusting. Have I done that one right? Yeah. Disgusting. Disgusting. I mean, I just can't believe he has the audacity to stand there and say, in the last 10 years, this figure has whatever, doubled or trebled. Oh, or yeah. mm -hmm. how, how it's 150% more that? than under the previous yeah. uh, administration. And uh, exactly. 50, 50 billion pounds more in uh, real terms, and uh, the Prime Minister has been very clear that, etc. and so on. Exactly. How many has got the audacity to stand there with a straight face? So he does, because he has no idea what the people that he's prime minister to, how they live, most of them. You know, it's just ridiculous. He's, he's got to go, everybody. He's got to go. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's this thing of like, I mean, I, I know loads of people are struggling and I've, I've actually decided that I probably won't live to see my pension because of the 
the state of the country and the health oh, so I'm spending I'm spend, I know that sounds awful, awful. but I'm saying, oh I'm gonna I'm gonna spend I'm gonna be a bit economically inactive but I'm spending my I'm spending my savings. Right. Uh, on comics just, and sweets, I bet. Yes, yes. Uh, well, this is, you know, what got to keep something to keep your chins up. Yeah, H A P P Y. Yeah, that's uh, right. But, like we talk, often say about the uh, starving children in this country going without meals, and you know, no wonder children are depressed, and no wonder parents are depressed. It's just this. So uh, it's just so obvious, and to many of us, and. Um, Picking on these poor people that have very little and are struggling and make maybe bad decisions because yeah. of it mm -hmm. without support. It's ridiculous. Yes. But on a happier note, oh. you mentioned Odyssey earlier and I just love that band. Zipping and up my boots, going back to my roots. My favourite native New York cat, just uh, love that. Yeah. Great intro, great song. Oh, Nick, yeah, I love it. I Keep looked up, up that good. song because I... I I genuinely couldn't remember who did um, zipping up my boots. And yeah, it was um, it was a, a a dozier. It was a, a do, oh, was, it was Holland or dozier. What one of those uh, super famous people actually wrote that song? It was uh, Lamont Dozier. The, I, uh, I've never heard of. Oh, him, the but... genius behind uh, just a load of classic old soul songs. Great song, but Odyssey had a great look. I mean, I loved it on t when they got on top of the pop. So I'm like, oh, because that's around the living room. Those were the days. Back to square one, I'd say. <laughs> 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 right, well, we'll zip up our boots and go back to uh, square one. But we're going to need a lot of hairspray, Julie. Thanks for that. 0345 6060 973. Chris texts, everybody knows the Tories have lost the plot. It started with Osborne and Cameron. I think this is nonsense. <laughs> Wonder what ever happened to him. Last time I heard, he was in the shed where they keep the tools. Leading Britain's conversation. Nick Abbott. Alexa, send a comment to LBC. Everything is going extremely well. Oh, I think I've played that one already. But everything is going extremely well. <coughs> apart from all the repetitions. Pete texts, stop all benefits, then you will see them miraculously go back to work. Pete, would you like to be the new Home Secretary? I believe the position will become vacant shortly. Sounds like you're just the fellow they're looking for. Brixham in Devon. Hello, Kevin. Hey. Hey, why, why do people hate so many people? <laughs> Why is there so much hate in the world? You know, well, Richie Sunak's supposed to be our Prime Minister. It's supposed He's to be, supposed yeah. To in charge. Why, why is he, on, honestly, o always hating people? What you said earlier was the brilliant, most brilliant diatribe I've ever heard from a radio presenter. <laughs> what, my rant? Yes. <laughs> uh, well, that might be stretching it a bit. Have you heard other radio presenters? Well, James O'Brien tries his best, but you, you oh. absolutely summed up everything. Well, I, I wouldn't hold myself in comparison to James O'Brien. James O'Brien is a trained professional. I'm just uh, a <laughs> dope who plays okay, okay. cow noises on the radio. <laughs> Can't even get that yeah. right. Honestly, why do they hate people so much? I'll tell you, it, the reason for that is that they hope that you will hate people too. That that's, exactly, that is exactly, what they exactly. are presenting um, as their um, unique selling point, hate. Yeah, exactly, exactly. People in need are people in need, and they don't... It, this, this thing about welfare, it's not welfare, it's social security. That's what you used to call it. Mm. It was about safety nets for people who couldn't look after themselves. Who had, uh, who had, had bad luck. I've had, I've had lots of bad luck in my life, and, I've, and, I, and, and luckily, things have come back for me. People go through things differently, right? And I, 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 I'm, I'm not talking as a Samaritan, although I am a Samaritan. It's, I'm not talking from anecdotally, but it's, it's just terrible that the way that these people want to demonize people in need. People who, everybody goes through need, right? Everybody has great times and bad times. Yes. And you just summed up it to me, was just like, just 
look, sometimes it, things are great. Sometimes things are not, not great. What they're doing is that they're, they're trying to appeal to our worst side. There is a part of all of us that, th- that, not, that thinks really. instinctively that people who have had bad luck are to blame for that bad luck. Have you got a call coming in, Kevin? I thought he's put us on, <laughs> put us on hold by accident. Uh, leave it with me. Thanks a lot, Kevin. Yeah, there's there's a part of us that think that we will. You'll go past a person who's sleeping in a doorway, and you're even if you don't genuinely feel like this, there will be a part of you that will blame that person for the position they find themselves in. Oh well, they must have been uh, drunks or they must have been uh, addicted or they uh, they were work shy or there, there's something that they did that um, means that uh, their uh, position is uh, justified in some way and we do it because it dif- it differentiates ourselves from them we don't want to think that if we just had a little bit of bad luck too we could be in that position it's um, it, it's too painful a thought to uh, to have. So we try to think our way around it. It's their fault. As the same thing actually goes for um, the disabled as well. Now, whether you act on that instinctual feeling uh, or, or the way in which you act is uh, dependent on what kind of a person you are. If you're the kind of person that the Tories are hoping to appeal to, then you'll stick with that initial instinctual ins- instinctual reaction. That it is somehow their fault. They have done something wrong. You wouldn't be so stupid as to do the wrong thing that got them there. And that's what they're hoping for. Which is... I don't know. It's not very nice, is it? I mean, I know that nice isn't a particularly uh, strong word. It's almost um, like... Uh, uh, damning with faint criticism, but it's not, is it? And the countries that, that are nicer, whose uh, governments treat them more nicely, they, they have more consideration and um, more um, acceptance of people's bad luck and create a, a safety net. They have happier people, you know, the Scandi people, all those six-foot blonde perfect people. Oh. All that lot always top the world's happiness index. And it's not because they're happy because they get to have um, hot Scandinavian uh, relations with each other. Disgusting. Although that might have something to do with it. It's because they don't fear being fired. They don't fear that having a bit of bad luck will make them lose their home or their marriage or their lives because there's a safety net there. They pay a little bit more tax, but they're happier about that because they know that their government is using that tax in order to help them. What a concept. As opposed to using that tax in order to help their donors, which seems to be the way in this country. And even if it isn't, that's our, that's our instinctual reaction to them now. I wasn't wrong when I said this uh, earlier on, that um, it is difficult now to take anything that the Conservative Party says on face value. If they say they are trying to help us, we, we start checking our pockets to see that they haven't uh, nicked our wallet. Metaphorically speaking. And it's not out of nothing, it's not us being unkind and not giving the, ben- the uh, benefit of the doubt. I mean, <laughs> how much benefit do they want? They've had 14 years already, and, and it's those 14 years that have brought us to this, uh, this opinion, surely. That we just don't trust anything they say anymore. They could actually genuinely be trying to help us. They could be saying, Warning! Warning! There's an iceberg ahead. And our reaction would be to uh, go uh, full speed ahead because we don't believe them crying wolf thing it's um it's an unpleasant place to be but the reason that we're here is it's our fault everything that ails us is actually our fault because we could have done something about it but we got distracted we got distracted by woke scones and um a rainbow flag 
We're yelling at rainbows now. And pronouns and unisex toilets and all of this nonsense. This just constant fury mongering. And the reason that they do it is because it works. We fall for it every single time. That's the reason that they keep printing stories like that. Stories that have the headline Fury As, as their first two words, is because we love it. We're addicted to anger in this country. I know that that is true. Oh, I'll, I'll blow up about three or four times a day now, man, but I can handle it. Just got a bit of a headache at the moment, that's all. Just stop being so blooming angry and things will actually improve because they won't be able to <sighs> recommend themselves by appealing to our angry side. If we were nicer, they'd have to be nicer too. Just a thought. But that's my problem. I think too much. <laughs> Every now and again, I'll have a think. When, you know, when no one's, no one's looking. 0345 6060 973. Tessa says, uh, We all know that experts are overrated and facts are redundant. I have watched a couple of episodes of Casualty in my time and consider myself totally qualified to judge someone's fitness for work. It would be a worthwhile use of my time as I am one of those people signed off work with depression. Win-win, no, says Tessa. That is a good idea, Tessa. In fact, you are a genius. Get some of those people who are off work sick to determine whether people should be off work sick. And they should start with themselves. 0345 6060 973. Text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. If you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10. Nick Abbott, LBC. On your radio, on Global Player, and Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation, this is LBC. This is LBC from Global. Leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. Okie dokie. Hot air. H-O-T-A-I-R. <laughs> James Tech survived, su survived, surprised the evil Tories haven't started to fine sick babies in hospital yet for being work-shy, lazy slackers bleeding the country dry. <laughs> yeah, those babies should grow up. Howard Tex, so you believe everyone that claims benefits is genuine. Please live in reality, not fantasy. A lot are playing the system. That's the reality. Howard, if you had been listening to this show, you would know that that is not true. It's always with extreme uh, arguments, these people. Now, I do not believe everyone that claims benefits is genuine. Neither did I ever say that on this or any other show. In fact, I said exactly the opposite. I said that itchy suit size as actually the germ of a point. Some people could do work that they're insisting they can't. Some people are gaining the system. The problem is that whenever the government says it's trying to help us, people have this reaction and they run in the opposite direction. Why? Because they've lied to us over and over and over and over and over again. You can't do that and expect people to believe you. And they continue to do it. This is not, it's, these aren't historical uh, uh, incidents. Rishi Sunak himself and uh, all of his uh, acolytes and hangers-on, they go out and t talk about inflation. And to a person, they say that inflation has dropped. That means more money in the public's pocket. It doesn't. They know it doesn't. They just hope that you are too stupid not to know that. Again, if inflation was 15% last year 
and it's 4% now, that does not mean that prices are going down. It means they're still going up, but from a much higher level than they used to be. Just at a slightly slower rate than before. But 10% of 100 is a lot more than 10% uh, of 50. In other words, as prices go up, it doesn't take a small amount of uh, increase in inflation to make them even more massively un uh, unaffordable. So we know that that's a lie, and yet they, and even when they're told that it's not wrong, to their face, they just keep repeating it. And then they expect us to believe some other thing they say. Like the vaccine rollout. Classic. It's been disproved uh, more times than um, I've had injections of any sort. And yet they keep saying it over and over again. Boger Johnson said it just the other day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, asked to what uh, a benefit of Brexit was. He couldn't think of anything to say and then came out with the vaccine rollout thing. Oh, well, we could only uh, have the vaccine rollout at the speed that we did because we were um, out of the European Union because of the glory of Brexit. <laughs> That's a lie. He knows it's a lie. It's been disproved over and over again, and yet they still say it, and then expect us to believe the next thing they say, and, and um, confect outrage when we don't. £350 million pound a week for the NHS. Anybody remember that bus? Nobody that was on it. They pretend not to remember that bus. Bus? What bus? So that's the problem, uh, Howard. I do not believe that everyone that claims benefits is genuine. I've never said that. In fact, I said the opposite at the beginning of this show. I'm going to send you um, uh, some uh, uh, Q-tips because it appears that you have waxy build-up. That is my expert medical opinion. 0345 Let's have uh, Cheshire. John. Hi. John. Um, what you were saying before the the break um, about people it's um my dad was a Japanese prisoner of war he joined in 36 and he ended up in the Japanese prisoner of war camp I used to say to me uh, there but for the grace of God go I and uh, and he'd been really had the, had the hard stuff you know being a prisoner of war but he, he and he wasn't religious he just said look at people and, the, and say to yourself there but for the grace of God go I. Yeah. And, and you can swap grace of God to luck. There, with a bit yeah. of bad luck, goes me. Yeah, exactly. And, um, but I've, I've gone off the, the thing I wanted to speak about. <laughs> the lady, the lady yeah. who spoke earlier on about the, uh, the music. Mm. Uh, Holland Dozier. Yes. Yeah, uh, listen, there's a show, it's probably on the app now, it's on the BBC app now, it's uh, Northern Soul, at the BBC Proms, great. Northern Brilliant. Soul at the Proms? At the Proms, yeah. What, a, an orchestra playing Northern Soul songs? With with singers, play, singing the song. Really? Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Hmm. I never heard of such a thing. Oh, you <laughs> You can get the app because I, I'm technically sick that way, uh, but you'll know how to do it. <laughs> yeah, leave it with me, John, and I'll navigate my way through an app. Well, well, I don't know either, you know. Yeah. Um, but when you say podcasts, I'm thinking that, that doesn't sound uh, very pain. That sounds a bit painful. That does. Um, podcasts. As, yeah, you mentioned podcasts. Yeah. I think. Podcast sounds painful. It sounds like some sort of um, medical issue that you, you want to go to yeah. the GP with, but you're a bit embarrassed. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the other thing about uh, Sunak, he's got advisors. He's not talking this stuff because he hasn't got it in No, he's not remotely um, interested in any of this stuff. He, he just is uh, dreaming of a fantasy lifestyle in uh, California. That's where he wants to go. As, he's uh, just filling his time. Straight away, if not sooner, yeah. He, well, he just yeah. he doesn't want to uh, end on a, uh, he, he doesn't want to get chucked out. I think it would be uh, too much uh, loss of face. Plus, there's uh, there's the money issue, and um, yeah, I'm not talking about the amount that he earns in uh, pay. I mean, uh, you know, 
maybe he just wanted to end on a bum note. Okay. Um, but the thing is, is that uh, his advisors are the, are the real nasty yeah. people behind He him. should fire absolutely every single one of them, because then they're, none of them are yeah. doing him any good. In fact, I'll, I'll uh, uh, cancel that thought. He should keep all of them, because they're, they're doing just great, uh, Rishi. Trust, trust yeah. every th single thing they say from this moment on. Keep them going, and the next thing you'll see is Darth Vader. <laughs> Darth, yeah, Darth Vader will be uh, our next Home Secretary. <laughs> just as that's, uh, just as soon as that position becomes available. All right, good work. Thanks a lot, John. <laughs> I think that's that, that's uh, just about the only place they've yet to go. Darth Vader. <laughs> <laughs> Howard says uh, no I read that one Tristan says Titchy Snack Size today said people shouldn't be concerned with normal life worries worries such as paying bills having a roof over your head warmth or for the really greedy food in your stomach why don't we uh, just invest in the right stocks and shares go into business get a handout from mummy and daddy or just marry a billionaire it's not difficult anyone can do it says Tristan well, if you put it like that, uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, people who have not married a billionaire yet, they're just, uh, they're just slacking. What are you waiting for, people? It's perfectly simple. People shouldn't be concerned with, with normal life worries. <laughs> well, he's not concerned with normal life worries. Nothing's ever going to touch him. Like, um, metaphorically or otherwise. If you try and touch him, you'll be met with a stern response. <laughs> oh, 0345 6060 973. Let's see now. Who's been waiting the longest? It, uh, I do believe it's Tooting. Hello, Jan. Hi, good evening. Yes, Jan. Hi. Yeah, I've got, I've got a few points to, to make about the, this, um, this, this sick note, this, mm -hmm. war, this war on sick note. So, what's in, what's a few, a few, a few points, but, but, um, What's interesting is that I actually I didn't know this until recently, but that it was the Labour Labour government in 2010 introduced fit notes. Fit notes. As, as, as a, yeah, fit notes. As a, uh, rather than sick notes, they 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 um, introduced that because they to give emphasis, and this is what the Conservatives are doing now to to emphasise what a person. A patient can do rather than what they can't do, and this is exactly actually <laughs> what what the conservatives seem to have pinched their well, not pinched, but that they kind they they they, they, they it's like they've taken up all of their worst ideas. Yeah. Hmm. But but um. But how is a GP in a space of ten minutes supposed to determine what job a person can do rather than determine that it would be difficult for them to work? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but Nick, what 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 I find really worrying, I, I, that they changed the law. I, I remember reading bits and pieces over the year, year that, that that they were planning to do all these things, but they did change the law so, to allow uh, people other than GPs to to issue these. Um, what they want to call fit notes hmm. to allow fit notes, not sickness notes, but fit notes. So yeah. as far but a fit as, note is a sick note. Yeah, well, yeah, it's a new name for it. So so a pharmacist. <laughs> It's and what's black is white, and what's up is down, and Rwanda is a safe place. Yeah, a physiotherapist, a nurse, it doesn't say what level nurse can do it, but it's like it's... What, what, is, what is also worrying is that... It doesn't... Uh, can, can I just pause there? It doesn't really matter whether they whether they uh, say that they're going to give the, this uh, position, this, this job, this uh, way of finding out whether you're well or not to uh, do a job. It doesn't matter if they give it to a nurse because there there are no nurses available. All yeah, nurses yeah, are currently yeah. up to their eyeballs in uh, bandages and uh, and ick. But, but Nick, what what is so worrying is that the, the narrative that they're using it's it's been bandied about quite a bit is that this government likes Sunak and and the, the, the his his um what do you call it cohorts in mm. 
narrative is that they're, 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 they're being they're minimizing the mental health aspect. I mean, look, just look at some of the figures. You've probably got, gone over some of them, but like 1.9 million people have been wanting mental health support, yeah. and it's you know, it's at breaking point. Right. And to add, uh, and you only mentioned a few weeks ago how how it's even primary school kids that, that have got mental health problems, and they're being they're being di- they're being um, prescribed. Um, what do you call it? Antidepressants oh. and things is right. quite shocking. And yeah. but but to, but to say that they're now what what the narrative is? What is it over that 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 um, there's uh, over medicalizing of everyday challenges of mm. life? You know the yeah. ups and downs of life, right. and making making them out to be um, like mental illness. Like I think one of them is generational. What well, GAD? That stands GAD. That stands for what's that? Gener- generalized anxiety disorder. Yes, as 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 like the, the, it's a, but it's a very dangerous way to go because I mean, but it, you know the fact that the mental what's it say mental illness costs three hundred billion a year. No, but, but it's very dangerous. That, that can't be right. <laughs> three hundred billion. Well, where did I I've got from that that mental illness. Well, I, t- I, t- I tell you what, it it, it costs. Uh, more than is treating it at source is to actually help people costs less it costs less in the long run but unfortunately politicians aren't interested in the long run short termism mm-hmm. is is what um uh, is the uh, thing that they're uh, interested in and and that's our fault as well but nick it's so it's so that what's it t- 2.8 million economically inactive and 1.9 million are on the waiting list for mental health support yes um and and not get, and, and the services are at breaking point but the thing is is that it's a very dangerous way to go and to minimize what what people have you know real serious mental health problems and and try and uh, and you know, look at what a person can do, whereas there's all these other things going on, you know, that serious mental health problems, they're not going to suddenly disappear. But this scheme, isn't it? They've got this work, work, back, work, work pilot scheme, work well pilot scheme that they want to get to. Yeah, we we could sort of debate the, um, the, the efficacy of the plan that they're putting forward all night Mm -hmm. long. But I don't, just like the Rwanda thing, I don't think the Rwanda thing is about Rwanda. I think it's about the struggle to get people to Rwanda. This constant, Mm. oh, we're being uh, stymied in our uh, uh, attempts to help you by lefty lawyers and activist judges and blah, blah, blah. I don't think Mm. that this is, um, is what it is on the surface either. It's just... Okay, well, we tried um, getting people angry at the National Trust, and that didn't really work. Mm. And then we tried uh, getting people angry at uh, vegan scones, and that only lasted uh, a couple of days. And then we had people uh, shouting at the colour yellow, because, uh, you know, that's what the European Union uh, uses, and uh, somebody had it in their fireworks, so we were really, really angry about that for about a month. Uh, but all this, uh, all this anger sort of dissipates on the wind. So let's get, let's go back to the classics. Let's get people angry at the at those who are less fortunate than them, because that works. And that's what that's what I think this is. Oh, it's it's, it's terrible, and and they're doing they're doing even worse. They're really targeting the the um. It's, it's yeah. Well, we, you're, I know you're focusing on this, but they're they're doing what what a lot of them groups are calling. Um, vicious. And, well, it's, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's what they think is uh, going to appeal to us. The nastier they are, the more they expect us to like them. And if you can get, if you can blame your circumstance on those below you on the ladder, then bingo, they got gotcha. you. You should be uh, concentrating on the people above you on the ladder pushing you down rather than those below you on the d- on the ladder who are in their words pulling you down that's the trick if you can if you, if you can get the people angry at those who are less fortunate than them then uh, you've got their vote in the bag but you know i think that we've seen so much of them that i'm not sure that, abs- that anything now bar um, some sort of um, miracle is going to save them from annihilation at the next general election. What is kind of surprising is that they don't... They, they've received this information, they know the position that they're in, and yet they don't change. They just think, well, what we're doing is really unpopular. Let's do more of it. 
that'll work. <laughs> I mean, I'm no expert, but it doesn't sound like a uh, route to success to me. Hey, thanks a lot, Jan. Got to go. 0345 606 0973. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10. Nick Abbott, LBC. We this is LBC with Nick Abbott. Right, so what are we do? We are doing a radio show given. Keep up. 0345 606 0973. Oh, look, it's a caller in Harrow called Jonathan. Hello. I'm so cold, Nick. You're cold? I'm so cold, hello. I'm sorry to hear that. Why are you cold? My boiler, it breaks down. It's the fourth time now. I've got no hot water. I've got no heater. I'm freezing. How do you wash? I have to get a little pan that I used to cook in. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and I have to use the kettle. <laughs> <laughs> I have to use the kettle to fill the pan up with hot water. And you get in the pan? I get in bath. Yes. And um, I have to, I mean, this is third world conditions. I come to this country 30 plus years ago and I thought mm -hmm. it would all be excellent. Yeah. <laughs> and the, 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 the pavement now, now listen, the pavement outside my road. Oh, awful, um, I bet. It, it's actually got little holes in it. Holes in it? Holes in the little, little pavement, and I'm not a racist. But? But, no, come on. But the uh, Romanian chappies, they stuff the holes full of um, Coke cans and cigarette butts because the government don't do nothing. What holes are you talking about? You know, they're called potholes. Oh, potholes, right. Want to score some pot? Holes. But the potholes are not just in the road now. Um... Oh, they're on they're the pavements on the as well. Right. It's probably I'm those sure. uh, those Romanians. They're digging holes in order to put their Coke cans, almost certainly. No, no, I'm not, I've got nothing against I did vote Brexit because I was beguiled by the Nizel Herald. <laughs> I was. So you were begu um, beguiled. <laughs> can, can, I, can I say a few quick points? No. Oh, um, all right, well, then. Well, actually... You know, because I, oh, sorry, I have to. It's, it's late now. It's like yeah. one thirty. I'm not to, alcoholic. It's one thirty. Have to be very, very quiet. Go ahead. Um, half past one in morning. Um, ah, I, I genuinely, I think I'll have to be away from the country within a few months because I was in India when Rishi Sunak was um, elected, and yeah. I had such high hopes for him. You know, I thought elected. he would be okay. <laughs> yes, <laughs> elected and, was he? I must have missed that. Go on. And he is, he is just doing one terrible thing after the other. Yes, that is true. It's just, I don't know. I want to firstly, if I can, apologize to you because you are one of the few, you know, Russell Brand, I know he's a little bit creepy allegedly, but he, <laughs> he, uh, listen, he, he uses the phrase the mainstream media. Nick, you are one of the few people in the mainstream media who mm -hmm. did not slander Jeremy Corbyn as being a dirty communist wizard. <laughs> 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 A dirty communist wizard. <laughs> right. The, the country would have been so much better without him. And I genuinely, uh, uh, my lease on this house, I don't want to, I know I don't have much time. My, my lease on this house, I'm renting. It turns out, and is lease the right word? Uh, uh, yes, contract. lease. You have a lease on the house and you're renting it. Right. In, uh, in, what, in, what, in, in what condition are you going to be leaving it, by the way? No, I'm not an alcoholic. Not an alcoholic, is, right. Booze. Mm -hmm. No. The thing is, I will, in a few months, they, because I, I have a limited company, and I now, like a homeless man, I'll go from letting agent to letting agent, saying, please, will you let me a house? And they say, what is your income? And I say, will you take my word for it? And they say, no. <laughs> no. You know, it's no. true. Yeah. And I, I wanted a small loan. Well, not a small loan. I wanted 48000 from a bank. 48000 What are you going to do with 48000 pounds? No, because I'm not a dodgy. I've got business interests. Oh, in well, you should countries. have said that. Business, should have said. Business. They won't let me into America again because, you know, like the Russell brand was uh, refused entry into Canada and Japan because he is a little bit creepy, allegedly. They won't let me into America. But <laughs> can I quickly... I'm so cold, Nick. Seriously, it's not as though I'm freezing. Can I quickly say something about how I bath before you cut me off? You want to say something about how you bath before I cut you off? Yeah, because this government, they don't do nothing to help, you know. I spent, I'm struggling so badly financially. I spent £48 this week, uh, well, this evening on a bag of shopping. A bag of shopping? A bag yeah. of shopping? Really? A bag of shopping costs £48 these days. I can't believe it. Because I bought little, little Starbucks, can I say the shop name? The little Starbucks 
caffeinated drink, Starbucks, some Star- liquid refreshment. Without, without mentioning any brand names, Starbucks, you say, go on. Some liquid refreshment mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. some uh, big bit of uh, Polish meat. A big, a big yeah. bit of... Uh, right, OK. Well, there's a question that immediately occurs to me, but I'm not going to say it on the air. I'll just, uh, no. I'll just think about it for a while. But can I, can I quickly say two quick points about politics and Mabar? Yes, you can, yes. Politics first, Be- please. Because on the politics, I don't want to offend you, Nick. But? But, no, come on, listen. But you... Oh, oh, oh. But you, you lefties, <laughs> I know you love... Uh, I have no alcohol problem. You lefties, I know you love Kia Stama and Zobiden very much. Yes. But the creepy Zobiden, he is just, I, he is just, like now, he is just so, he, he don't do nothing. And I know you hate Trump. You call him ding ding isn't it? You yeah. don't like him at all. Just just for the benefit of those who um, aren't, uh, who are hard of hearing, when when you say Zobiden, you mean Joe Biden. The, the creepy sniffer, uh, sniffer in uh, chief. The, uh, the hair sniffer, mm-hmm. Yeah, he's he's. You have to admit that even though Bill Clinton, I thought he was gorgeous, even though he's got allegations <laughs> against him. Uh, listen, Allegedly, he, he was very yes. he was he was very good um, political figure. Yes, because every night to prevent my insomnia, I'll, I'll read Tony Blair's autobiography. Oh well, that'll do it. Yeah, and he's got a big picture on the front. And you know, apart from the fact that he um, he introduced tuition fees, actually with the father of someone I was in business in. He introduced tuition fees. He um, uh, alienated lots of people, and he had a host of alleged war crimes uh, behind him. But <laughs> apart from that, he was lovely. Yeah, apart from the uh, this weird look that he's got now, the, the the sort of billionaire's haircut that he's got. All billionaires have terrible hair. Have you noticed that? Are but, you talking about Zuc- Zuckerberg? You call him creepy moonface boy. <laughs> yeah, that moonface creep who runs Facebook. Yeah. But, have, you, um, have you seen the videos this week of him? Uh, no, no, nor would I like to have you no, describe them lo- to he's me. Got, he's got lovely head of hair. He's, got, he's looking, ooh, he's looking youthful and ref- they're really knocking to death. Sorry, he's, he's looking youthful and refreshed. <laughs> refreshed. <laughs> but, but can I quickly make a last point about my bath? If about I your bath? Yes, please. Because I'm freezing actually, and and I know Trump would probably be more strong in the world today. But my bath, Nick. I'll come to this country with high hopes, but now I'm having to use a pan full of hot water to bath with, and I used to cook breakfast in it. Oh. So I've lit. So I've literally now got. I'm so cold. I've literally got bits of egg and bacon rind, <laughs> which when I'm. No, it's true. When I'm pouring the hot water, one pan worth from the kettle over my head, I'm literally having bacon and egg rinds washing into my back passage. Well, you you'll always have a, a snack on hand. Jonathan, just just think of it like that. <laughs> and I think that that's where we've got to leave you. Uh, in, in his bath, uh, smelling of breakfast. Mm-mm. 0345-6060-973. You can text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. And if you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Don't blame me for anything that's happening uh, on this show. This program was like this when I got here. 12.30 on LBC, the news headlines with Tim Daly. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 trying to be funny because I'm all out of laughs. No, there's nothing funny about it. 0345 6060 973. By the way, I do a podcast with Carol McGiffin. Yeah. Now, if you want to uh, tune out from doom scrolling because there's precious little that's good in the news these days or ever, in fact. So if you want to take a, a little break from that, a holiday, if you like, then I can recommend that the podcast that I do with uh, me, uh, the, uh, huh? Hello? I can recommend the podcast that I do with Carol McGiffin. Oh, right, yeah. It's called What's Your Problem with Nick and Carol? Now, the idea is it's a problem-solving podcast. If you have a dilemma that you wish us to solve, then send it to the following address, nickandcarol at global.com. That's N-I-C-K-A-N-D-C-A-R-O-L at global.com and prepare for total satisfaction. Oh, right, yeah. Ask for it by name on an internet near you. What's your problem with Nick and Carol? There's uh, hundred. There's almost, like, uh, almost about 130 episodes. I cannot believe that we've done so many. And it comes out twice a week now. 
It's about 40, 45 minutes worth of concentrated amusement. I think you'll love it. What's your problem with Nick and Carol? It's a little tune-out from, uh, you know, what ails the world. Bradford, Mohammed. Hi, good evening. Good, well, good morning, Nick. Yes, sir. Hello there, my friend. Uh, it's a great show. Thanks. And uh, I, I love listening to everything. All is uh, the interesting topics and uh, yourself, you make it quite uh, comical in a good way. And, uh, you know, but we we discuss a lot of good, interesting points. And uh, tonight's been really interesting because the topic is uh, benefits and uh, I mean, there's many points I'd like to make, if that's okay, Nick. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's beyond a joke. You know, I'm sure many people will agree that they stay of the UK. Uh, some, obviously, some places are worse than others, but... You know, <laughs> yeah, some places are worse than us, yeah. That's not really a recommendation for 14 years of Tory rule, though. That some places are worse than us. I mean, you, you could find some if you tried, I suppose, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, so... I mean, it's uh, morale has, is low, I think, for many people. Mm. And uh, Rishi Sunak, I've got, I've, I've got nothing. Per, I mean, he's uh, our prime minister, but he was interviewed recently, and uh, he started laughing on camera. You know, I, I forgot what the question was, but he just started laughing. You know, it was probably he, uh, a question about uh, 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 helping paupers, or you know, some, something yeah, like that. Something, that, something that a billionaire would find funny. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it's not a good thing, you know, <laughs> to be laughing like that when people are struggling yeah. on a daily basis. Well, he doesn't right. really do human very well, does he? I mean, there's something just uniquely odd about him when he, when he's presented with people. He just can't do people. He, I agree, because he's of a different... I mean, class altogether. I mean, the working class people like myself and yourself, you know, we struggle daily. But he's he's on a different ball game altogether. He's very, I mean, I don't know, he's high class, no doubt. But he has to get to the level of the people. <laughs> he's he's the high class. The, people, the yeah. working people who run the country, who pay right. the taxes, he I, has to go to their level. Right. I, I, I don't know whether you were meant working class or people who work but i would have to say point of order mohammed i am not working class i'm about the most middle class person i know yeah the point being that you know we have to understand people at the level they are they are they are right but he's he's on a different level anyway but you know the other points uh, i'd like to make is that standards have dropped holes a lot in many many places standards we've got you know People who are not qualified or people who are not mm. to the right caliber yeah. running, well, running. Yeah, just you just wait. People aren't qualified and are about to uh, make decisions about the people's medical fitness, if you can believe yeah, that. Really, that's, a, that's the interesting point that you made earlier, and it's true and it's wrong because we don't, we, we go to the best people, uh, and there are best people out there, but they're being let down because they're not being used. In, in the right places. I mean, you know, if you have a uh, rust uh, on metal, we use WD-40 and it does a good job. <laughs> and, and IKEA is simple. Just follow the instruction manual. Yes, exactly right. Good. Just a little squirt and it'll, uh, everything will work just smoothly. Yeah. All right. Good work there, Mohammed. Thanks for that. 0345 6060 973. They do keep telling us that we, we need to pay all of this money for politicians and they need their uh, five grand pay rise and uh, they need the, all of their expenses and they need to uh, employ their wives, uh, girlfriends, boyfriends, husbands, whatever, as their personal assistants. And on and on and on. And we need to do all of these things because we need to get the best people. Well, if these are the best people... Can we see what the second best people look like? Absolutely. I mean, just as a way of comparing and contrasting. Can you send over a selection and we'll pick some? David Tex, why are the UK government allowed to keep the election dates to themselves? I don't know any other countries that do this. Uh, hmm. I don't know any other countries that do that either, but that doesn't necessarily mean there aren't any other countries that do that. It's just that I don't know of them. But it does seem a bit... Here comes that word again. Unfair. Unfair. 
Let's see now. Uh, Belfast. Hello, Brendan. Oh, hello. My Jean Moy. Always wanted to say that. That meant at Sarah's for good morning. Ah. Anyway, um, what, what I had originally rang up to talk about has just receded into the deep, distant mist. Because <laughs> it's receded oh. into the distant mist. Yes. There it goes. Bye bye. Yeah. Uh, that was it. But, uh, and the reason for that, or part of it, was that uh, Lady Jane, I didn't know who her, what her name was or whatever. Who? And she, Lady Jane. Lady Jane? Yes, but you call her Jane, I think. Who's Lady Jane? Oh, she, listen, she may not, I call her Lady Jane. You call her Jane. The lady who was on about the mental health issues earlier on, she's a regular caller. Okay. Do you not know who I'm talking about? Uh, not really, not really, no. Well, anyway. Not, no, we can't proceed. Okay, do you, was, do you mean Jan? Yes. Right. Right, her. <laughs> and then, and after her, yeah. after her, mm -hmm. there was... Jonathan. No Is doubt. That, yeah. Was it Jonathan as well? It could have been. And, and there, Jonathan, there really is no way of telling. Oh, come on. you got to pay more respect to your uh, callers. Because I really should start... Why we I, I should really start listening to this show. You're quite right. No, you shouldn't. You should pay more respect <laughs> to your callers. <laughs> your callers are why we are here. No... It actually isn't, Brendan. People don't listen to the show for the callers. If I left, there wouldn't be much of an audience. But I do wish you uh, all the best with your drinks cabinet. Thanks a lot, Brendan. Yeah, I think he was fully refreshed. Booze. And a little bit, um, I don't know, a little bit dyspeptic, perhaps. A couple of Renés will, uh, will set you up for the uh, evening there, Brendan. Fran says, this morning, Sunak said, you don't get anything out of life without hard work. I nearly spat out my coffee, says Fran. As the sixth Duke of Westminster said, the best way to be wealthy is to have an ancestor who was good friends with William the Conqueror. <laughs> exactly. And your family employing whole armies of lawyers and accountants so that your great-grandfather can uh, give uh, his uh, fortune in full to your grandfather and your grandfather can give his fortune in full to your father and the father can give his fortune in full to you. Taxman doesn't take any of their money. Just yours. 0345 6060 973. Manchester, Raj. Hi there, Nick. How are you doing? You okay? Good, thanks. Oh, we lucky we had off there for a few minutes. Um, so I want to say a couple of things. First of all, so you know these uh, people who, well, these new people who they'll have assessing um, the, the, the 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 well the mental health yeah. or disability people. Well, one they'll be on some sort of a, a scheme, won't they, where they get a bonus for the yes. more people. They will they will have targets stop. targets yeah. to meet. So yes. yes, that's why they won't be doctors because they'll have you know, for everyone that they get. Well, they won't be doctors because we don't have any. No, no, we don't need any. For this job. <laughs> we don't need um, any. <laughs> not for that job. No, no, you just need cruel people like Suella Brother would yeah. be brilliant at that job. Oh, you? she would, yeah. Oh, what, I'm, whatever I'm your problem down. is, um, you get back to work. Yeah, it doesn't matter how, if you've got like no, like you know that, um, what is it, the Monty Python sketch, you've got no arms, no legs, but I'm still oh, going to. Twas but a scratch, yeah. Exactly, exactly. And the other thing is, this is I think one. So, you know, even if they go ahead with this, they're not going to be able to get it through Parliament, are they, before the next election? No, it, it, all this is, it, it's just, it's it, it seems to me the, the flailing around of a dying entity, they're just desperate for something to work, and they've tried this woke thing, and that really didn't do it for them. I mean, it was a little sure. distracting, it gave a little bit of an amusement uh, for a while there, you know, scones and flags and... <laughs> toilets and uh, all the, and pronouns and all the rest of it but they can only get people to be angry about that for so long and so they yeah. think well what what are we going to do now because um, everything we're doing is failing so they're going to go back to the classics and the classics are what we've got now blaming those less fortunate than yourself for the things that are wrong with your life 
But even the um, like rough sleepers thing that they're talking about, that's oh. not going to go through Parliament. No, I seriously doubt it. But that, that again... So it's just the point that, of Stephen coming out with these ones. Everybody knows they're not going to win the election. That's that's a big, a guaranteed, virtually. Pretty and much, two, yeah. Even if they, you know, they haven't got the time to get any of this stuff through anyway. I know. So it's just a bit of nonsense. It's just a bit of window dressing to, um, yeah. to, to see if uh, we'll uh, pick up uh, any of the stuff that they're throwing at us. But it's just uh, it's landing on stony ground. So where are all these people going to come? Well, I suppose it doesn't matter, is it? They're not, they're going to come, no. They don't like, require all these people from, like you were saying, you know, come out of Greg's. Even if, they, uh, even if they enact this policy immediately, even if they start tomorrow and they start hiring people in order to be members of these specialist teams, as they call them, they aren't going to have any medical knowledge because all of the people with medical knowledge are already up to their eyeballs in work. That's what the waiting <laughs> list is about. We don't have enough doctors. The, what they'll need to say is, what they're interviewing, they'll say, right, who's your favourite, say, cartoon character or something? And they have to be all the villains, won't they? They have to pick, like, all the villainly people. And that's how they'll get the job, because how else are you supposed who, it, It's impossible. Who would, who would you get for this type of job? Obviously, you're a doctor. There's nobody with any medical, obviously, knowledge. I, I know of somebody who's not doing much these days. My name's Donald Rob, and I'm a Tory. I don't support the Human Rights Act, and I don't believe in economic and social rights. My name's Dominic Raab, and I'm a Tory. He seems like a uh, shoe in to me. Perfect for the job. Thanks a lot, Raj. 0345 6060 973, LBC. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 6060 973. Tweet at LBC. Text 84850. We are running late. Jerry texts Admiral Admiral Nelson lost an eye but carried on working. No sick note. Then he lost an arm and carried on working. Still no sick note. And then he died at work. And I think he could then claim a sick note. I blame Nelson for ruining the sick note sick note culture for slackers everywhere, says Jerry. I do believe that was a listener with material. Oh, no. If only I'd known that at the beginning, <laughs> then I wouldn't have spent the last, what, seemed like an eon reading it. Huddersfield. Hello, David. Hi, Nick. Um, Jonathan was on Harrowing Farm. Yes, he was. Um, he was. Now then, uh, this system's already going on uh, with regards to testing people for their fitness. Oh, yeah. for different things, including benefits. I was assessed, I'm visually impaired. I was born with a visual impairment, and then eventually uh, I developed a glaucoma when I was 16, and right. it's a degenerative eye condition. Yeah. So you can look, anyone can look that up. It's a doddle. And it's true. Anyway, I was assessed for uh, additional benefits or to continue on a benefit that I was on. Mm. And I walked across the room. The person called me for this assessment in a big room full of people. And luckily I was with somebody else, and that somebody else could see where the person was. So I said, I'll follow you to her. Yeah. I walked, walked across the room and got assessed by that person as being having more vision than I actually had because they didn't have any experience or knowledge, so they cut the benefit. So eventually I appealed. I was appealing. So wait, wait a minute, back up a second. So, so they on. said that you had more visual um, uh, ability, ability yeah, that, than you had yeah. because they found you with assistance in a room. And they didn't notice the assistance you see, due to lack of experience right. and knowledge. I got that the wrong way. You found them with assistance in a room, right? And then they found that I could see better than I was claiming because right. I'd walked across the room to them. <laughs> <Right>. Now, <laughs> so I, I appealed, and <laughs> you can laugh. Anyway, <laughs> it was quite, speaking of harrowing, it was quite harrowing for me. Yeah. So, um, that's, but that's presumably it doesn't that's... affect your ears, though. I mean, you can tell where things come from with your ears without, without uh, seeing them with your eyes. Well, that's sort of okay, but there were people in between, there were low-level CTs okay. that blended with the cat, oh, and right. pillars, pillars in the okay. room. I mean, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to catch me out, Nick? Are you trying to take... <laughs> I don't know what you're up no, to. No, I'm anyway. taking your side. Well, I'm saying that they yeah, couldn't understand like that you could find them by, by the direction that the sound came from, I rather than by seeing them. But right. should behave. There were several rooms in that direction, and I okay. didn't know which one. They'd nipped back into right. Honestly, do you want a video of this event? Or Absolutely. What? I mean, goodness no, me. No. no. Well, anyway, here's another thing. 
Um, well, so what I was the outcome? Through, well, I, I won the appeal, obviously. Oh, OK. Because I wasn't lying. Right. Unlike the guy who said a few minutes ago yes. that people are playing, swinging the lead, as they used to say. Well, I wasn't swinging the lead. OK. I mean, I might have done, but it might have hit people because I didn't know. Anyway, so um, here's another thing. Free at the point of access, the NHS, you were talking about NHS earlier. Mm. Free at the point of access when it's prepaid in taxation. How can it be free at any point after it's paid in taxation? Well, no, I mean, the phrase obviously means that they don't present you with a bill as they do in most of the rest of the world. Yes, but it's useful propaganda in t getting people not to value it as much as they actually should. Oh, because well, they don't realise the pain. Yeah, but that I, I don't think somebody came up with that phrase in order to do that. They might have... Um, they they might it's just a happy coincidence. Yeah, they might dissociate you paying for it in your taxes with it actually costing something, with you having already paid for it. Yeah. I've had arguments with people who resent paying national insurance because they can't see any benefit for it. Well, they could do it. They <laughs> fell down some stairs. Yes. But I'm not going around tripping them so that they fall down some stairs so well, that I can win the argument. That's good. And finally, Nick, because yes. I normally... Uh, and in quick. closing, yeah. And in closing, I'll go, don't worry. I once worked for an employment service helping other people with disabilities into employment for yeah. a long number of years, actually. And we got some of our funding from a thing called the European Social Fund. Uh-oh. Be be what do you mean? European? Because <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> because we were in a considered to be depressed area compared yeah. to the majority of Europe. And we right. actually got money. And we had to use every penny of that on recipients, beneficiaries of the service, mm. aiming to get them back in. Well, don't... Guess what happened when the Tories got into power in 2010? They covered the bill entirely. No, they shut it down. Yeah, that's yeah. Well, that would have been my second guess. Yeah, you were close. <laughs> no cigar. Yet. Yeah. Thank you for better luck next say, time. Nice All things. right, thanks a lot, David. Oh three four five six zero six zero nine seven three. Shaz texts: If Fishy wants to save money. Let's start by removing the subsidised bars and restaurants in Parliament. Booze. Yes, yeah, good idea, Shaz. And they are definitely not going to do that. It would save a lot of money, but they're not going to do it. But it would save a lot of money. Huge. Tony says, Rishi should go further. We need toddlers aged one to four in work. They're the real slackers. If they're so hungry, they should get out there, <laughs> get out there and work. Yeah, exactly. They're dragging us all down, those kids. Kidderminster. Richard. Hello, Nick. Hello, it's Richard from Kidderminster. Long time no speak, Nick. Oh, haven't um, I been yes. lucky? <laughs> <laughs> I, I know. I, I, I totally agree with the last one as well. Cancel all the MPs' expenses yes. and put it into the NHS for a start. Yes. And and, and I also suffer from um, um, uh, quite a few things, actually. I'm on um, eight lots of medication. Eight? And I've gone through, yes. Eight lost of medication. I've gone through several work capability assessments, and um, it, 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 the one it took over six months to go and um, you know to get some money out, and that's going back some donkeys years. Six ago. months. Yeah. What were you supposed to do in the meantime? 
Well, <laughs> exactly. To just sit and there I, and shut up. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Anyway, and so, so there we go. And uh, yes, and Rishi Sunak said to touch, and I don't think he'll be next in Parliament. And I've just got me list so it's up because I know it's coming up to the top of the hour now. Mm-hmm. So I'll, I'll be big as quick as I can. Yeah. Uh, taps. I, I don't know. I don't like taps. That taps. Taps. Oh, yeah. taps. And the gifting. Taps. Oh, things. me and Carol. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah she does yeah. go on about her taps. Taps. Yeah. Don't she? Yeah. But, yeah, I suffer from trauma, scoliosis, bipolar, and not one thing or another. But there we go. And um, and dentists as well. Um, <laughs> it, it, I, I've been waiting yeah, for, for b- before the COVID. Anyway, I got... What? It took me, You've been yeah, waiting to see a dentist since before COVID? <laughs> Yes, yes, and 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 one in if if I can well in Stower Bridge and and, and last one I actually got through to uh, put me on a priority and they said oh we can see you you know it wasn't private and nothing so yeah my dad bless him he, he's only got over cancer bless his heart you know uh, he he hadn't been too well but he, he's got over it so there you go. so did you go to the dentist yeah 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 oh you've been there already. Dentist. Yeah. Right. It, 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 and you know, did they well, pull any teeth? No. Oh. No, they didn't. They just put some dentures. It, just a couple of... Oh, right. Them, them, Have you ever had any like, teeth pulled out? I I didn't. No, no. I've got lead filling, but I don't... Oh, think well, who hasn't got one of them? Yeah. Um, no, no. What, the, what surprised me about getting my... Because uh, I had, just before COVID, I, it, it seemed like I was the last patient in before they closed everything down. I was so fortunate in that regard. But I went in and... Um, it Because my ordinary dentist didn't want to pull the tooth out because uh, she thought that it was a bit too close to a nerve. But that didn't, oh. that didn't concern the dentist that I was referred to. And he just yanked the thing out. And it came out so easily that I I didn't think that he'd done it and that he was just, you know, warming up to pull it out. But he pulled oh, it out no. already. And it, and it just sort of... It's like it almost just fell out of my head. As though if you bend down, you're in danger of lose, losing a few teeth because they're just... Unless you concentrate and keep your teeth, you know, pressed together, you might actually uh, lose them because they don't seem to be stuck in... Uh, very well at all. Not in my experience. They, 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 I think you're in danger of just like a, a trail of teeth behind you wherever you go. But um, I, maybe I am overreacting. Richard, I've got to go because um, I'm fresh out of time, but thanks for that. Uh, finally, Cornwall. Malcolm. Oh, good evening, Nick. How are you, sir? I'm great, mate. I just had to ring you to share the, the, the good news with you. Ah. Uh, the, Welsh, the Welsh people asked, asked me, uh, we've been voted the kindest people in Britain. <laughs> the, bad, the bad news is, is you lot in the southeast are the least kind. <gasps> How yeah. dare you? It, it's true. But um, I, I was thinking earlier, and... Um, with me being Welsh and, 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 and us being the kindest people. I, um, I don't want to be unkind when I say this, but, but I'm wondering whether Richie Sunak might be um, a little vengeful with his proclamation today about benefits and, and um, mental health and the rest of it, because I think there's going to be a group of people uh, over the next year or so who could, and, and I say this in all seriousness, because it's, it's already happened to more than one. There are going to be people in the Conservative Party now who are going to be suffering quite possibly fairly serious mental health problems a year from now because they're going to be moving from quite a privileged yeah. position. That pays become, a lot of money Yeah, to desperately yeah. trying to figure out how to get uh, another job where they don't really have to do much for, that pays six figures. And, and they are going <laughs> to be quite obvious and and stand out ish in the community yeah. in which they are living in and the people who they maybe haven't served so well as you've said with their voting records on benefit. Right. But I think but either deliberately or unknowingly he is not going to be doing some of his conservative um <laughs> colleagues <laughs> many favours, Nick, because yeah, no doubt. they are yeah. gonna be suffering. Them. But don't we don't worry about uh, Rishi Sunak though, Malcolm. He, he he's not gonna be suffering at all. None of this is going to touch him in any way, shape, or form. 
All right, thanks for that. Now, if you missed any of today's show, you can listen back on Global Player. We do put the Friday and Saturday night shows up the internet as a podcast, uh, which means that we take the news and most of the ads out quicker to listen to. Use less electricity. Do your bit to protect the environment. It's exclusive to Global Player. If you have one of them stupid smart speakers, the magic phrase is play Nick Abbott the whole show podcast. It's uh, the official LBC app is Global Player. If you haven't got it, then you can get it from your app store or globalplayer.com. I'll be back tonight at 10 o'clock, coming up at 7. It's Ollie Dugmore. But first, Clyde Ball. Nick, thank you. After the news, so Rishi Sunak has delivered his big speech promising cuts to the welfare bill through tough reforms. Do you think the forms, 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 do you think the forms? 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 Do you think the forms?